and you were gone. Uh, I was gone. Yes, I. Uh, were you out drinking? Alone? Well, no. The, like like uh, Vice President Pence, <laughs> I choose not to drink. Uh, uh, and uh, the wife is the the anchor on that. Uh, Testing, testing. Hello. And we're live. Hi. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Well, hello. Everything's yes. everything's a a, a, a a shimble, a kimble. What? I just made up a word. A kimble. Yeah. Look at this. Even yes. the, even the even the the the. I just looked here. Even the yeah. the camera settings are off. <laughs> oh boy, it's a Monday. It is Monday. Yeah, we're just uh, recovering from a windstorm here. Right. Can you hear us? I hope so. Uh, let's. Uh, yeah. So we're just uh, kind of uh, fixing things up. Let's let's right. let's fix these things up live. Oh, let's do it. Wave, Jason. Hi. Hi. Okay. Uh, Hello there. Uh, yeah, we're uh, we had a windstorm. We uh, re actually we didn't have internet on Friday. No, yeah, it went down. Nope, wrong way. And so we couldn't even broadcast live. So we're gonna fix this. So our last show was Wednesday, turning left. Yeah. With the new things. Oh look, there. Okay, that's good. Yes. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I should fix that too. <laughs> uh, you know. I could. As much as you could with me in the shot. Yeah, that's okay. You know, wearing white. Hello. What am yeah, I? Yeah, I felt I felt extra virginal today since it's a Monday. You know. Is it? Uh, By Friday, I'm wearing black. It's Holy Week. It is Holy Week. Yes. Do you, are, you, are you monitoring the stream? No. I hear I hear it in the background. So do I. Oh, you know what? It's probably over there. I'll go fix ah, that in a minute, too. Okay. In two seconds. But you can tell us uh, it's Holy Week. It okay. is Holy Week. Hi, I'm here. Oh, let's throw. Does this work? The other thing is I didn't charge up my, my pad yeah. that I have all set up to do the show. Sure. Right? As you know. And so what happens? I'm like, and it's one of those things. Okay, well, let's let's start with the first Monday morning <laughs> rant. Mm, yes, as we get into uh, what I call the King of Pain Monday. That's right. There's um, a little black spot on the sun today. Yeah, that little black spot <laughs> was a yeah. big giant spider in the kitchen, and the clock had stopped too. So the spider yeah. was probably responsible for a that. Arachna so. Apocalypse yeah. 2017. Yeah. That's the Monday. There you go. Uh, so I I have a a Android pad. Which mm -hmm. is according to people. That's how you control all space and time. Right. Yeah. According to people, that is the uh, the most popular operating system. We talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have one of those. And, and they're really cheap, too. I mean, this was like cheap as dirt, right? It's like Doc doesn't have a lot of money anyway. But, but I mean, I needed something to push buttons and make all this go. Yes. And it was like cheap. And they have an app. And boom. So anyway, Man. I have that, right? 
oh, I got to make this long story short. And so I, the batteries drained out last yeah. night, overnight. And so I went to plug it in to use it. And it's one of these things you can't, like back in the old days, yeah. when the batteries would go, you, I'm going to fix that. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> but I'm just going to finish my story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You plug in a thing. And it's on power, and then it charges, and then it brings it up, and you can use it. And sure. I, I plug it in here so it doesn't run out of batteries during the show. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. No, not this. You have to charge it. It has to. It just gives you the charging, and then it lets you use it. Wow. Yeah. Guess what else does that? My shaver. Mine too. Yeah. So there's two problems this morning. <laughs> Didn't plug the shaver in last night. Oh, for two. And that. But luckily, Oof. I have a, a phone yeah. <laughs> that I actually, an Android phone that I actually can run the app on. And so we're. There you go. Got a backup. Isn't tech marvelous? No. Well, I mean, you In the meantime, backup. I'm going to go fix that. And okay. you're going to talk for a second. I'll do that. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Happy Monday. We got some stuff to talk about today. <laughs> Why not? Because we're here and the cameras are on, so we figure we might as well. Hey, uh, let's see here. Blazers make the playoffs. Yeah. And uh, uh, I don't know if you saw over the weekend the uh, uh, young anchor, uh, news anchor lady from uh, India. She uh, was reporting live uh, about a breaking news story of uh, a, a fatal car crash. And the fatal car crash happened to be her husband. And that's how she found out about it, was oh, live man. on the air reporting. And uh, I saw the video of it. They uh, have it, you know, up there, of course, on the Internet. And uh, <clears throat> I was amazed at the professionalism. That's horrible. Uh, she tre that's her sad. voice trembled for a second, but she, she actually, uh, you know, made it happen until their uh, break, like, 11 minutes later. And I'm like... I'm like, wow, th this lady's something, man. Because I tell you, I, I would have been a basket case out of uh, yeah. 15 seconds, you know, maybe at Kay. the most. And uh, wow, I it, it just it's one of those things where y you watch it and you were just speechless, you know. Yeah. So, there's that. Um, po the Pope. We all love the Pope. It is Holy Week here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Pope uh, opened up a uh, a. a Entirely free laundromat in Rome for poor people. Oh yeah, to do totally free laundry. I was like, wow, that, that's that's cool. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Much like uh, a, a service that's here in the Milwaukee, Oregon City area called Laundry Love. I uh, had the uh, you had the Laundry Love people on the we, uh, we one did of the, one of the shows. Yeah, Dave uh, Dave McAdams. Uh, we had them both on the Thursday show, and then of course, you know, the Turning Left on Sunday night. And he. Uh, does a nonprofit uh, laundry service for homeless and low income people here in Milwaukee and in uh, Oregon City, and that sort of selfless, uh, altruistic sort of uh, well, you vocation. Gotta you know, you got to do it. Yeah, I mean that's important, and and uh, that's so that's good. Uh, good talk for uh, we have uh, Cr Christian Holy Week, right? Yes, isn't that this week? Oh, uh, yes. It is. Next Sunday is Easter, yes. What? This is a whole week. Yes, this is Holy Week. God, I wish I knew where that voice of <laughs> was coming from. <laughs> so tell us, uh, is it today, isn't Monday something Monday? Mimosa Monday? No. I know. I don't have my Catholic hat on this morning. Really? Yeah, no, I, I don't I'll have look it up. up. Yeah. All I ha all I know is uh, this this early in the morning with no hardly any caffeine. It's uh, I'm not even there. Of course, yet. Good Friday. Yeah, you know, it, it, so I feel bad. Not it's so like good Saturday. Some Holy Week thing, and I'm all cranky. Yeah, what's new? It's a Monday, and uh, it's and you have it's, and it's curmudgeon, right? Well, it's extra curmudgeonly. Oh, extra. Yeah. With extra fries, with extra fry sauce, curmudgeons. Uh, let's see. Okay, you yes. know what? I'm just gonna look this up. I wonder where that's coming from because I turned it down there. <laughs> there is a device that's on right now that's yeah. talking back to us, and you probably can hear it. Uh, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday. I thought there was like some Monday, Monday, Monday. 
Monday, Monday. Isn't that it? Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's a Monday, Monday. <laughs> in the name of the Lord. And the da, boom. Monday, Monday. That almost sounded Hinduistic, though. It did? Yeah. Hi. Uh, no, 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 no. I was speaking. Maybe in, Buddhist? Speaking in tongues. Sure. Oh, well, yeah, that's a little Pentecostal for you. I, I was just thinking about that. Some of my early Ernie pet. Ernie. <laughs> yeah. Show's over. Thank yeah. you very much. See you Good later. Good night, everybody. Uh, yeah. yeah. Some of my we'll early. Go f- we'll go full Pentecostal later when we break out the check and well, try to sacrifice it live on air. Well, well, okay. So when I criticize religion and Christianity, yeah. sure. don't fight me on this. No. Because I'll tell you why. Okay. Uh, where did I get my start? Let's see. How many versions of Christianity have I been in? There's people <laughs> who have been in more than me, but I've had my share. Mm-hmm. Um, which sounds like a song lyric. Christianity, I've had my share. That's a crooner song. <laughs> it's know. Frank, you know. Top hat. We bring the top hat out. Late anyway, on a Thursday night. This is great. So all the people who are religious are like, oh, you're making fun of our religion. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but I, I had the Pentecostal. In, sure. uh, my grandma was part of a kind of a, uh, I think it's like Pentecostal Assembly of God kind of thing. Oh, Holy Roller sort of thing? Yeah. Very. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she came from uh, being a Quaker. Wow, um, that's quite a shift. Quakers are very demure, not yeah. demure, but stoic. And huh. so uh, uh, what happened was, uh, but then she was Pentecostal because they didn't allow her to sing, dance, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, there and, was no Quaker soul train. And while I'm telling this story, just check and see if you got the Facebook open there. All right. Just on your device. Just, I, just I do can make it favor. happen. But anyway... Um, so uh so there was that and so then it was pentecostal and then what happened was uh so that was kindergarten preschool and kindergarten so i kind of got a little of that but it wasn't it wasn't too crazy speaking in tongues or whatever so and then there was lutheran and then there was catholic high school so we can see the slide right pentecostal then you get the lutheran then your full bore uh... and then agnosticism (laughs) atheism yeah yeah uh little like comparative religion thing that went on there for a while sure and then uh uh i don't know that was it oh there we go and uh someone's speaking to me over the headphones it's not your headphones is it you hmm? got new headphones are we picking that up from i don't, I don't think know. we are though i don't think we are i hear it kind of off though yeah that's where it's coming from hi Technical problems. Anyway, so I thought I thought there was Let's a Monday. I it. thought it was a whole thing because uh, yesterday, mm-hmm. I only know this because my mom said something. Was Palm Sunday? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're a religious guy. You have religion. Well, <laughs> you got religion in you, boy. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yesterday was Palm Sunday. Yes. So that's like, uh, what happened? What really happened? Like science proves it. Anyway, anyway. Uh, it, it, there's Jesus, and uh, he comes into the city. Yes. And he's kind of a hero. It's kind of a WWE, kind of like Vince McMahon. <laughs> Jesus on a donkey. Right. right. And he's, then he's the maverick, you know. He's, yeah. he's the outsider guy. He's the guy preaching. Uh, and then uh, there's palms. And then there's palms. It's a, it's a sh- uh, sign and show of respect. They lay down pa- right. palm fronds. On the ground in front of you. But did they have a bunch of other like guru, mystic dudes like Jesus? Because there were other prophets and stuff. I mean, oh, he was sure. a prophet among prophets. Sure. Mm-hmm. Right. I yep. mean, and other religions like to point that out, but um, Christians like to go uh, son of God, though. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> That's pretty much your. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he came in. And, I and... I see your uh, I see your prophet, and I raise you a Messiah. Right. Right. Anyway. And so, 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 he comes on in, and uh, in the bombs, yeah, it was like, uh, and in this corner, prophet from Judea, Jesus, and then he comes in, and people lay down the palms, and then it's right. like heroic, yeah. And then after that, things go really wrong. In the story. south, yeah, yeah. Showed up to the temple, uh, saw the money changers, decided to lay down a little. Uh, Smack down there in the temple. I like that. 
And uh, that, that's that's one of my favorite Jesus moments. Right. The money. Right. You know, it's like, you know, GTFO. This isn't a money place. This is a God place. This is, you know. Right. And then it's like Jesus Christ Superstar, a bunch of hippies running around. Jesus God. You know, uh, funny enough, I mean, (laughs) segueing. Yes. uh, He, you know, by that sort of New Testament biblical standards, I mean, he would have been considered to the uh, Pharisees and the uh, ruling elite of uh, Judaism. Uh, he would have been considered a hippie, right? Some he yeah. you know, yeah. some uh, dirty, dirty hippie out there in Nazareth, hanging out in Galilee, you know, and he, he's uh, coming to town, and you know, for the you know their uh, Passover Woodstock, right? And, right. Uh, we actually uh, we probably should show a little clip of that and get our copyright, our daily copyright violation from uh, <laughs> right from uh, YouTube. Oops. And I now eternally hate Chris Hardwick. Yes. We got some issues with Chris. Uh, we thought maybe, you know, he's a tech guy. Yeah, you know, he's cool. He's not going to be He's not gonna be this corporate shill. Yeah. Turns out he's a corporate shill, right? Yeah. yeah. Isn't, it fun, isn't it funny? You get a few billion in your pocket and you turn into the man. Yeah. I mean, we, we were a little not safe for work. Uh, we didn't do a Friday show because, like I said, the, the windstorm yeah. that precedes the locusts and the... <laughs> The frog. Just work it into the religious uh, narrative here. Uh, but uh, send your card and letter to Jason Allen at Turning Left Radio. Sure. Why uh, not? Uh, but anyway, uh, we. Um, I'm looking at the monitor too. I'm doing this all wrong today. <laughs> Talk to the camera. That's going to get fixed. That's monitor's yeah. going to get moved over. But anyway. Is it bugging you? Uh, yeah. Because when you look at it and people watch this, it's like, why is he looking over there? Why right. is he, who's he right. talking to? Right. Jesus? <laughs> He's talking to Jesus. It's Monday morning, Jesus. That's Welcome right. to Jesus Talk. What you don't know is Jesus is here in this room right now. Mm. In this podcast, he just doesn't use the call in number. No. Well, he doesn't need to. 503 395 Once again, 503 395 5050. Four zero. You can call in now. That is the news box uh, news line. Did it, did it, did it, did it. Call in now with your religious stories. Sure. <laughs> set us straight. Sure. You can always call in and set us on the record. Ah, you guys are wrong. But anyway, uh, where was I? Um, so, where was I? <laughs> um, this is see. the thing I heard about the memory seminar they're going to have on the radio. Let's see, Jesus, check. Palm fronds, check. Entering Jerusalem, check. Yeah. And uh, then things Passover, went Smackdown, check. Uh, windstorm in Portland. Windstorm in Portland, check. Uh, yeah, so then there's Ash Wednesday. Yes. Do you know what that one is? Ash Wednesday? Yeah. Well, it's that's, a, that's a, sign of, uh, a sign of devotion as uh, we uh, commence the Lenten holiday. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I remember. It was uh, uh, the windstorm, sign of the cross over there. windstorm, sign of the cross, yeah. Palm Sunday, Chris Palm Sunday. Hardwick. Chris Hardwick. Uh, Chris Hardwick. Uh, so, the so we went is, from Messiah to Antichrist. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Doc Housel. So okay, so oh. so we had the we we had a live show on Wednesday. Yes, we had Doc Housel. It was a little not safe for work. That's fine. It was a great show. We love Doc Housel. Oh yeah, but it hasn't been posted yet because when it was posted and we marked it, you know, hey, you know, just beware. Yeah. Uh, what happened was it got a copyright violation because we played a little tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Yeah. From uh, Nerdist. From Nerdist. Not the Warner yeah. Brothers uh, Wonder Woman thing. We cro- like, we cropped up on their radar, huh? Yeah, and it, it, wow. it's it's a copyright where it's like, huh. you can't play this. It's blocked. How dare you? Like, so Warner Brothers, it's like, oh, we see you. You did that. We're gonna throw an ad on your thing. Fine, whatever. We know. Yeah. We know. We played your little trailer. We talked about Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. But then uh, we played something. Doc Housel was like, she was like, oh, this funny thing. And we're like, oh, here it is. Let's look at it. And bam, you can't play your video on YouTube. Bam. So I'm not happy right. about that. So I have to edit. And I didn't have time to do that. But you can still yeah. get the show on the audio podcast. Correct. Which I should yeah. remind me later. Mm-hmm. 
because all that we're we're on iTunes. It's all iTunes. We're like it's done. Bam. 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 Yeah. Bam. <laughs> Bam. On Sunday. iTunes. Bam. Bam. Holy week. Magic. Bam. What's in your playlist, Jesus? Yeah, Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. Jesus little, Christ Superstar. There's a little, Godspell. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> there's a little wheel Sorry. turning in my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's that. And did you notice I fixed the problem? Yes. It's silent in here now. Right. Yeah, I like it. Until the leaf blowers go off, but that's okay. Yeah, we can handle uh, it. Headphones plugged in. Somewhere Death to the landscapers. Be. Anyway, mm -hmm. so okay, so at you were uh, uh, rolling back Chris Hardwick. Uh, yeah. Copyright violation. Hate, hate, hate. <laughs> Palm <laughs> Sunday. Love, love, love. Who <laughs> did Yeah. And then we go to Ash Wednesday. Yes. Ash Wednesday. Okay. Yeah, Ash Wednesday. Sign of devotion as we enter Lenten season. Okay. So, Ash Wednesday. So, skip ahead a month and it's Palm Sunday. So, in the Bible, yeah. it says Jesus came out. Yeah. And, uh, and a dude was like, Hey, how's it going? You're Jesus. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice it's to meet you. Like, kind of like, uh, kind of like Prince Charles. Hey, very nice. Nice to meet you. No, yeah. he's much more dynamic. More. I, I watched uh, last year at this time, the Hollywood Theater actually played. Uh, Jesus Christ Superstar in the theater and I actually went to go see it with my kid my kid likes musicals and yeah. it was really fun it was actually not as bad as I thought it would be it was like actually like it was all 70s and hippies and it's right. a really interesting right. interestingly directed film and all that uh, but anyway uh, so guy comes up and Jesus go I got something for you what <laughs> I got something for you right yeah, there yeah, yeah. on your forehead it's like what's this dirt ash yeah why You'll see. You'll see. So that's Ash Wednesday. It's called foreshadowing. Biblical foreshadowing. Can I get my coffee? Do you? So why? What? What? Yeah. What is that? Do you remember? Do you know? Uh, Don't look it up. <laughs> just uh, this is horrible. Yeah, it's a, it's a uh, sign of faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm it, getting coffee. It's, it's morphed into that. I need coffee. So. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna look this up because I, I we I, could we could also play uh, uh, since it's the first uh, you know now we're in Holy Week we get we could play a little biblical uh, let let's uh, pack off the hardcore evangelicals. Yeah, well, you know the guy, <laughs> the guys who gave everyone a bad name. Right. Uh, Ash Wednesday derives his name for the practice of blessing ashes made from palm branches. See, mm -hmm. I knew it had something to do with the the palm. Yeah. So they burned the palm. Right? Yes. Uh, blessed on the previous year's Palm Sunday and placed them on the heads of participants to accompany the words "repent" and "believe in the gospel." Jason, mm -hmm. repent. Repent, and ye shall be saved. And believe in the gospel. Yes. 503-395-5040. Man, this is turning into the 700 Club this morning. Oh. Uh, you can just play that one Jim Baker audio thing over and see, over again. I like, I like the Christianity, like, like oh, like the, you talked about just a little bit ago about yeah. the laundromat. Yeah. Right? And it's yeah. like, here's a laundromat. Or come do your laundry. It's free. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Love that Christianity. Love love all religions that do that. When you get on the TV with your 700 stuff, yeah. and you're a complete evil yeah. person because you are. You know you are. <laughs> you know who I'm, you are. I'm gonna look in the camera. You are evil, sir. You mean you mean the uh, Oral Roberts 900 foot Jesus in Tulsa, Oklahoma well, just doesn't resonate with I think you? Think Oral is gone now. Yeah, he is gone. He's. He's he's gone to the hereafter. Anyway, yeah. False prophets, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> false prophets, ladies and gentlemen. Or five hundred three. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so you you do the ash and I've seen it both ways. Jerry Falwell, what say you? Uh, another. <laughs> uh, going, yeah. Anyway, wasn't it, Falwell like the uncle or cousin or something of Jerry Lee Lewis? Oh, he might have been. Yeah. 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 We'll look that up. Yeah, keep keep a keep a tab open there. One was uh, preaching great balls of fire, and the other one was pre preaching great balls <laughs> of hell and marrying his cousin. Hellfire, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. 
Mm. So here's a here's a thing, right? Yeah. Here, like, see, she's the lady. Maybe it's a guy. I don't know. Uh, with a cross there. Yes. Uh-huh. On the head. Or I think it could just be a smudge, maybe. I don't know. No, the uh, priest takes the thumb, gives the little uh, sign of the cross on the forehead. Okay. And uh, it's a sign of devotion and faith. Okay. Well, maybe it's somebody, mm-hmm. other really, other versions of Christianity do it yeah. differently because it's like, oh, if Catholics do it, we do it this way. Right. Catholics say right, we say left. <laughs> Catholics right, go right. forward, we go backwards. That's right. That's Just saying. It's the way we roll. Mm-hmm. Um, holy rolling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> holy holy <laughs> rolling. <laughs> I, I, uh... <laughs> that, that, was, that wasn't, was I, I was hoping <laughs> to pull <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis, and I ended up with uh, Little, Richard. Little Richard. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, uh, that's a church that I want to go to when they start doing the womp, bop, holy bop. Yeah. And then the faith will scream, womp, bamboo. Yeah, the... Uh, uh, the Church That's of beautiful. Top Secret. Ooh. Yeah, one of my favorite Ooh. movies. That is Val Kilmer. Oh, yeah. Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. Uh, you will. If you watch this movie and you love it and you laugh as hard. It's, it's a Zucker, Zucker Brothers yeah. movie. It's, it's the airplane people and all that. Oh, yeah. And yeah. It's, it's one of their lesser known ones. But it I think it's even it's brilliant. better than the airplane movies if you like that kind of my, really in your face comedy and yeah. if you watch that movie and you love that movie oh, yeah. that song will stick in your head forever and ever i mean you like little richard what about but just what right because <laughs> yeah and then uh anyway. my, two, my two favorite uh characters on top secret <laughs> is latrine latrine and chocolate, chocolate mousse. mousse i love that <laughs> the french resistance <laughs> right Right. Val Kilmer is a rock and roll star who somehow, somehow, ends up in occupied France during the war with. No, no they're East Germans. Actually. East Germany, right? He, they got a it, goodwill concert in East Germany. And yeah. So. So I guess it's set in the present time in East Germany, but the East Germans are just basically all Nazis. Right, they're all wearing old Nazi uniforms, yeah. and you know, you, you want to yeah. think it's modern day East Germany, but there's but no all, pretense about it. It's basically it. Nazi, and there's yeah. a French resistance. Yeah, they're in France too. <laughs> French resistance, yeah. I mean, it's just all mixed up, but that's okay. That's what those guys do. That's, that's what they do. It's just, that's what they do well. It's just it, a two hour long acid it, trip. It it's just great. works. Right. Uh, and there's a cow and, and ballet a cow. dancers. A cow and rain boots. Yeah. And ballet dancers. And ballet dancers. Yeah. And all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Right. So oh, it's they've just quick. shot latrine. Yeah. Do you know a little German? <laughs> Why, yes. He's right over there. And Hello. he comes walking out. Yeah. There's a little small. Love Top Secret. Now I'm going to have to go home and watch Top Secret oh, now because it's, it's, you threw that out there. It's so. actually uh, uh, during Holy Week. Top Secret is a must, a religious, you know, you have to go see the, boy, when I was in Sunday school, (laughs) yeah, film strip, oh, wow, they weren't even, they weren't even 16, like, like you'd go watch educational films in grade school, and they bring out a projector with a, with a reel, and you're like, uh, AV uh, this is what happens when you date, you get a rash, (laughs) don't get a rash. That's Billy's right. got a rash because he was on a date. Little Billy, dude. Billy's getting in more trouble than I. Yeah. He just, you know, all in all those uh, cool, you know, uh, little uh, public service, high school, health, whatever it is, videos and, and films. It's always little Billy. Yeah. They never deviate from that. Little, you know, li- little Billy was a fine, <laughs> upstanding youth until he found LSD. Oh and, you know, yeah, those were the best. Billy, this one called like Billy on a trip. Uh, Billy on a trip. Billy on a trip. Uh, little Billy's misfortune, <laughs> and that's where he's not, not to be not to be confused with the Disney feature Billy Goats on a trip. Right. My what favorite though that? is uh, Billy's. Little Billy's got a gun. Oh God. Billy's got a gun. Wait, that's Aerosmith. Sorry, that's right. Uh, no, it would the yeah. you know. Little Susie has a rash because Billy has poor hygiene. <laughs> right. Oops. Um, right. Poor Susie. Scabies is real. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, Happy Monday, folks. Uh, uh, so so they that's what you'd see in school. Yeah. Black and white. Yeah. But in Sunday school, they didn't even have that. Sunday school, 
you, they had this thing. And Fla- it was flash like, cards and sock puppets. Well, it was like a film. It was kind of like a film strip thing. Yeah. But the Sunday school oh, teacher I know what you're had about. to flip it. Yes. Once. Yes. Remember, this is the show is called Coffee with Curmudgeons. Right. By the way. Um, and and like a slideshow. And almost. then there was a record. Yeah. That they played, which was the soundtrack. Yes. And so yes. it would be like. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, um, you get the white noise in the background, like slide one. <laughs> You're right. Jesus entered the temple as people put down palms at his feet. Slide two. Right. And meanwhile, you're just a six-year-old kid just looking forward to the grape juice and, and graham crackers, right? Oh, good point, yes. You know? Or sneaking some wine. <laughs> Ooh, the sacramental wine. <laughs> no, I mean, you're you're uh, about... Little Billy would do that. You'd about get in the three sacrament. or four yeah. minutes in, you'd be looking up at that cross with Jesus hanging there going, I wonder if that hurts. I'm just, I don't know. He doesn't look comfortable up there, you know? I no because <laughs> yeah. they probably would you Jesus would you like to watch a film a Sunday school film strip of your life or would you like to hang on the cross mm, I'll hang on the cross thanks great oh brother <laughs> that was horrible it was just uh, yeah. horrible the yeah. entertainment value and then we had a nun in high school who just would put on the Jesus Christ Superstar and be like, all right. Was she one of those cool cool nuns? Yeah. 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 And she'd like, bring in your favorite record. And how how much you, you didn't bring bet. in you didn't bring in like Kiss Alive, did you? Stairway to pink? Heaven. No. It was always Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> it was That's always right. and like every you know, every kid in that class, it was like, hey, I don't know, listen to Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. Stairway. Yeah. What does it mean? And then someone said, play it backwards. And it was like, Ooh. no more Stairway to Heaven. Right. It turned into ACDC's Highway to Hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> play that backwards and you get the Palm Sunday message with your film strip. Right. right. <laughs> what? Jason, seriously. Elton John, it, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Well, what you're yeah. No. That's logical, right? Okay. If you play Stairway to Heaven yes. backwards, yes. we are told, we, we are have told. it on good authority. Backmasking, okay. sure. There's word on the street about this. Huh? That uh, there's satanic messages. Not even not even put there by Zhnip, the musicians. Zhnip, Zhnip, Zhnip. Freddy's Zhmer. the devil. Freddy's exactly, the devil. Exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. right. Uh-huh. And there's several other pieces of music that we understand Beatles. have this stuff. Yeah, right? right. So if you play Highway to Hell yeah. by ACDC backwards... You know, or Black Sabbath track, or you know, you just name name a track, right? Sure. That Dio, Ronnie James Dio. Oh, Holy you know, Diver. Holy Diver. Yeah. You know, something that deals with the devil and you eat up. And, you know, yeah. if you play that backwards, do you get <laughs> Jesus loves yeah. you? Jesus loves you. I would think so. I, I yeah. would think that there's some sort of positive so reinforcement logical. going on, right? It's logical, right? Yeah, polar opposite. So, I mean, if you have, uh, let's say. Uh, uh, Dio's Holy Diver, right? Yeah. You're, you're going to have uh, Last maybe... Last in Line. Yeah. Last in Line. One of my favorites. Yeah. I'm a big Dio fan. Oh, huge, Ronnie. Ronnie yeah. James. Yeah. Great Pipes. May uh, he rest in peace. Uh, my favorite song... <laughs> God is like, hey, hey, Ronnie. <laughs> so, Ronnie. About those lyrics. <laughs> right. Let's go over last in line, shall we? <laughs> anyway. As you're standing the last in line yeah. by the pearly gates. Yeah. Hey, Ronnie. How you doing? Anyway. God's then like going, okay, little secret, dude. I've got the best band up here, okay? <laughs> well, yeah, you got what, Hendrix? Is that Hendrix? Yeah, John, you know, you got uh, Bonham. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Super group. Yeah. David Bowie. <laughs> David Bowie. Yeah. Boy. yeah, all Thro- the people we lost last even year. Even Little Prince. Yeah, you know Rogers Nelson. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? you, know, you don't think God's gonna kick them out of heaven? He's gonna be like, uh, no, I like, I like my music. I like good music. Of course he does. You yeah. know, he's, he's a, he's a musical guy. You know, it becomes a a, a scene out of. Uh, out of we were talking about the the movie uh, last week, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It just becomes yeah. a scene out of that where all of a sudden Mozart sits down with Henry, yeah. and, right, right. And a giant. 
uh, Heaven Mall. <laughs> what does this do? You know, next thing you know, he's Synthes- doing Ode to Joy, right? A heavenly mm-hmm. synthesizer. Right. Robert Moog, who is not Ooh. with us anymore. He's like, he's back there too on all sorts that of stuff. for you, Beethoven. This is wonderful. I love these sounds. What Bach would be like? What's that noise? Oh, that's we call that switched on Bach. Right. <laughs> it was from the '60s. Think of the choir, though. I mean, you got you got Morrison. <laughs> oh yeah. You got Joplin. Oh man. You know, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and suddenly a Mercedes Benz appears, bling! and Joplin's like. I can't do a job. I was going to do like a big. Right. Do you want a piece of my, my heart can't, now, I can't, baby? I can't. Now, uh, gonna, let me ask you this question. It's too, too early in the week. Do they let in Janice and the holding company, or is it just Janice? I don't know. I Well, I'd, I'd, I'd go you with know. the whole band. Always always go with the sidemen. Yeah. You know, always go with the whole band. Right. <laughs> just, just bring them in. Yeah. In the meantime, Bob Dylan just. Down yeah. here, staying alive, just well, doing, Keith Richards doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is the immortal. You know, there can be only one. Exactly. And it's, we found out it's Keith Richards. He is the only <laughs> one. The apocalypse comes, and it's like odd. Keith Richards is still around. It's like I have a theory about Keith. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Keith. Uh, <laughs> the reason why he's uh, alive is you know uh, you know how when you get. Um, uh, after you pass away, they put you know formaldehyde in you and they embalm you and so oh, yeah. he did. So he got embalmed by heroin, oh. and so my uh, my theory is that uh, be, you know when you have like a, oil is finite, right? Mm-hmm. And so my my theory is drugs are finite too, and we're gonna run out of drugs because Keith is gonna use them all. Mm-hmm. And so when people want to get high in the future, they're gonna actually have to smoke Keith. Oh wow! That's my, that's my theory. Wow! Yeah, that's a uh, that's my Monday morning Holy Week yeah. theory. <laughs> but he's clean now. But he's clean now. Yeah. We were wrong. We, we were wrong. See, we do fact checking here. <laughs> we do fact checking. That's what we. That's the beauty of uh, the internet and stuff. Like you can yeah. watch your NBC or CBS. Yeah, they'll, they'll say stuff, and it's like, oh, that was actually not true. Uh, but. I'm, I'm fact checking on the fly. Ash Wednesday was March first. Yes, I think it was the start of Holy Week. Yes, as as Holy Week commences. As Lent. Yes, which I totally missed. I launched, yeah. <laughs> I launched a podcast network on Holy Week. That was what I did. Uh, we did. Yeah. So okay, so Ash Wednesday yeah. was the first. Then we had Palm Sunday, which was yesterday. Yep. And then Holy Week. Holy Week. Uh, April 9th. Uh, this is Catholic. Mm-hmm. www.catholic.org. Excellent, yes. Uh-huh. Great resource for uh, Catholicism online, Catholic online. Holy Week, 9th through 15th. Holy Thursday. What, mm. what, what do you think Holy Thursday is? Get ready for Friday. Good Friday. <laughs> I don't know. What is it? I'm such a bad, I'm such a bad, I'm such a lapsed bad, bad Catholic. uh, They're actually playing. Should we look at the video? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know. Is this on the Nerdist? I always, right. Uh, Oops, sorry about that, Nerdist. Uh, Yeah, I was always aware. Maybe it's because. Do we even have audio? Oh, here we go. Oh, I turned it down. Holy oh. Thursday is the oh. commemoration of the Last Supper of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. It is when he established the sacrament of Come Holy with us. Communion. We need cool background. His arrest Why can't I go full screen? It also commemorates his institution of the priesthood. The Holy Day falls on the Thursday before Easter and is part of Holy Week. Jesus celebrated the dinner as a Passover feast. Oh, is that what... Christ would soon fulfill his role as oh, a Christian that's right. of Passover. Oh, oh, yeah. So that's the, the Last Supper? Last Supper is Thursday. Good Friday commemorates him getting... Uh, Killed. Yeah, his uh, the passion, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, Saturday, you know, is the... Uh, What's that one? Well, that is uh, when you're quiet and observant because uh, he is supposedly dead. And then, of course... Didn't something happen on... No, that was Sunday. Of course, Didn't Sunday, something happen on he rises. S- yeah. Yeah. Something happened on Saturday? No, it's a uh, usually Saturday is a very somber, quiet. Really? Yeah. There's it's no, it's like, a day of reflection. No big playoff games like ah, yeah. Oh, they'll be those two. <laughs> no, yeah. Saturday is a uh, day of reflection. Oh, you know. It's not not a big playoff game. 
No. Like there was some like Romans versus Judea. Ooh. Ooh. And then it was like, uh, oh, yeah. That's like full scale Premier League. That was a drag. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, so yeah. so Thursday was the Last yeah. Supper. Uh, is yes. what we're saying. That's, that's what they... Uh, uh, Tell us. Traditionally commemorate, yeah, Thursday. And and that's the uh, Da Vinci painting. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Just as it happened. As it happened. It's like reporting. It's like he was in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, even though it was, uh, ooh, uh, what, millennium and a half later? Uh, 2,000 years, give yeah. or take. You know. Yeah, you know. Give or take a millennia. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so 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 as it happened, uh, it, it, Eddie Eddie Izzard has a great you know pose for the oh wait is there right. posing for the Last Supper? You know that's yeah, yeah, that's why routine. I'm glad it happened pre uh, photography because selfie. yeah yeah uh, Judas Judas come here take a selfie the apostle selfie right <laughs> you're uh, Judas with its thirty that, pieces of silver yeah they pro- it's you know. probably there. I'm I sure bet you if we Google it. It's on a wall somewhere in the catacombs. Yeah. You know. Um, a uh, so, so yeah, yeah. So then there was, I thought they were like, they f- or was that on Sunday that they found a rock or something? And That's Sunday. Okay. Uh, uh, Mary and uh, Mary Magdalene, Mary, Mary, uh, Mary Squared, they uh, show up there and then the uh, rock has been moved away. Uh-huh. And they go in there and they find uh, just the empty linens. And of course they're baffled. Hey, what's going on? Right. So they walk back out, and guy's sitting there, and he says, "Yo, what's going on?" And they say, uh, "Hey, uh, where's our dude? He's not here." And he says, "Listen, man, he's gone now." So, uh, hey, yeah, that's what that's what's happened. As uh, as we ask the Lord, you shall receive. There you go. The Last Supper oh, selfie. selfie. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of them, of right. course. Uh, that if you're just listening here, uh, uh, the the Lord Jesus is uh, holding up a selfie stick, <laughs> and the apostles, and uh, I, I'm guessing that J- uh, Judas is the one flipping the bird. Yeah, I'd, I'd think that. Yeah, uh, and one's the peace sign. Maybe that's John the Baptist. I don't know. The peace. Yeah. Who Ooh, knows? I'm. Uh, I don't know. Is that Peter? Maybe. Nah, not Peter. Peter wasn't a real peaceful guy. Yeah. Well, John the Baptist. No. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, oh, I think John the Baptist wasn't John the Baptist dead by then. You know, cut I, off the head. And, I don't know, Jason. I yeah. don't remember. See, I have to dig back into my the uh, Muppets Last Supper. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, no. what do you mean we're getting sued by the Henson Estate for this? No, they can't. I, it's just a static image. There's your Disney now. There's right? your Muppet, and and how does Animal become the? Uh, the Lord. Uh, wow, that's crazy. Tell me, there's Beaker in there. Yeah, Beaker's on the. Uh, isn't he on the end there, on he, the right? Yeah. Do you, Do you have any favorite Muppets? I, I guess I got a Animal's couple. Animals great. Animals, Animals great. great. Yeah. Uh, well, you're a drummer, so Animal just. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, yeah. Animals wonderful. Yeah. Uh, uh, I like the sax player who's right next to him. Uh, Doctor Teeth. Oh, like Doctor Teeth, like the, the Electric Mayhem or something yeah, like that. I like yeah, the band. Yeah. All the All the Apostle Muppets. <laughs> All the possible Muppets, right? My two favorite are, uh, let's see, I like uh, Pepe the Shrimp. Oh, I love Pepe the Shrimp. Pepe the Shrimp. I like see, him. I like, yeah, I like non top I like Muppets that just make. Right. My favorite, though? You ready for no, this? No, he's Pepe the blow, Shrimp. Gonna God, blow I love Pepe the Shrimp. Uh, Lou Zealand with the boomerang fish. Hmm. Never heard the boomerang fish? He throws a fish and it boomerangs. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. But Pepe's awesome. I don't uh, know. Well, I have to look him up. Pepe, uh, the the little Muppet Christmas thing. Yeah, they're rolling in there, and there's two guys from the Sopranos sitting in the back of a uh, restaurant. So Pepe's up there talking to him, and they're like, uh, "You you you're a shrimp." And they go, the guy next to him goes, "They called him the prawn." Oh yeah, that just cracks nice, me up. nice, all, all the time. I like the Swedish Chef too. Come on, yes, yeah, Morton, like, Vrieten, Vrieten, like, Morton, and Beaker, yeah. and uh, what about that giant bear? Yeah, I can't always remember. It's is, is it Fozzy? No, this is just a, a giant one. bear dude. And yeah. in the also in the Christmas one, he's sitting there. Nathan Lane is talking about a, a bicycle that he wanted for Christmas, and he didn't get his bicycle. And uh, and he goes, and it had a bell that went ring a ding ding. And then the bear behind him goes ring a ding ding. And just for some reason, that just cracks me up. I think that's just fabulous. It's weird, but makes me uh, what I what I find humorous. 
but uh, there was some um, ring a ding. Oh yes, we had Muppets news last week that we didn't talk about. Yeah, yeah. I it, can't remember. Last Julia, week. Yes. a Muppet with autism. That is right. That was the last week. We that had is right. Muppet news. So Sesame Street, right? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. That is cool. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, some. I, I don't know. It was. It was. Uh, it seemed cool. There was some controversy too, yeah. as with anything. Um, so right, but you know the cool thing about uh, Sesame Street was, and Henson, and uh, they they were so avant garde in a way that they were tackling uh, very very oh, qu- yeah. quietly and very classy, good social issues of the day. Yeah, and uh, Oscar the Grouch. Too. Oscar the Grouch. Love Oscar the Grouch. Yeah. Kind of a model for my own life. <laughs> Next, I'll be living in a garbage can. Oh, jeez. This story's not going to end well. No. Holy cow. Oscar, yeah. I'm a big fan of Oscar. Speaking of stories that end well. Yeah. So after a big dinner on Thursday night. Okay. Uh, Jesus uh, uh, comes into town, and then they pick him up. And then uh, it, there's a big Mel Gibson film, yeah. I believe. Yeah, Mel. Called The Passion. Passion of the Christ, yes. Never seen it. Didn't sound, didn't sound good. Well, yeah, I, I did. I saw did it. Did you? Yeah, uh, just simply because I wanted to see what all the hubbub's so about, what's right? Your, okay. So, yeah. since we're speaking holy, I mean, gosh, I mean, it's all religion, but it's Holy Week. Uh, sure. What's your favorite uh, Jesus movie or, or Jesus religious movie Jesus religious movie doesn't necessarily or Jesus could be a side character just you know well, favorite uh, a, a religious movie doesn't have Jesus in it but mm-hmm. uh, I think my favorite of all time would be probably a, a movie called The Mission oh. Jer- Jeremy yes, Irons yes. Uh, and Robert De Niro yes very bing, bing, very bing. cool uh, very cool movie What's that one about? It says they're, they're, it's a mission. Yeah, right? he uh, goes down they? to South America. South America? Yeah. And, uh, this is an old movie. This is like 80s or something, right? Yeah, I'd say around 87, 88. This was like De Niro's there. like, hey, what are you going to do? Hey, what are you gonna do? hey you're looking at me. And then play a, a religious guy. Yeah. Okay, then. Yeah. Hey, hey, what hey. you going to do? Hey, 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 Jesus. Okay, hey, hey. You know. Right. Right? Yeah. And Jeremy Irons. I think so. And that I was so. crappy. Jeremy Irons, but yeah. Hey, pick I me. Mean, I mean, pick it, me. You talking to me? Yeah, I mean, you talking was, to me? Who's De Niro like doing? Is it Scorsese? I don't know. Uh, okay, I don't know. All I remember is up. the soundtrack Fact was check. fabulous to it. Yes, uh, won a lot of awards. It did, and it, it was a very well acted, uh, well written movie. I think uh, I saw this long ago and I haven't seen it since. And I think as homework. The Mission is a good, uh, maybe I'll watch The Mission. Yeah, good movie. Yeah, yeah. 1986. Uh, I want to actually look this up here because I'm interested because this is what I do. Oh, directed by Roland Joffe. Yeah. Music music by, duh, Ennio Morricone. Uh-huh, yes, yes. It's actually, I think it's on one of his test top ten soundtracks. Yeah. One of my favorite composers. So yeah, Robert De Niro, Jeremy Irons, The Mission. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, um, with Jesus in it. Oh boy. Ooh boy. What about you know? Uh, Scorsese did a Jesus movie, Last Temptation. Was that yes. the Last Temptation? Was that right? uh, William Dafoe? Right. Yes. Never seen that movie. Neither have I. <laughs> Never seen. Ooh. Or you know what? Easter homework. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think Holy Week I may have actually caught it a little bit on cable or whatever. Yeah, I'm, yeah, never. And then I was like, mm, "Goodfellas is on Stars." Right, it, it just my more my kind of movie. Are you telling me Jesus lost out to Henry Hill? Remember the story about that <laughs> record on yeah. in the film? Yeah, and then yeah. Jesus had a big dinner. Yeah, Sly Cooks. Yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. So it's like kind of kind of tainted my Jesus mm. film viewing. It's not to say it's I can bad. understand that. I mean, come on. What yeah. about uh, the uh, what's the the Moses with the uh, Heston? Not that one. Oh, Ten, Ten Commandments. Ten yeah. Commandments. The old uh, 
That's really giant. old school, almost Cecil B. DeMille. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. we can look that up. That's giant. You got that guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, pff, you know, Heston. Come on, Ben Hur. Right. Ben Hur. Which I hear. Ben Hur. They have remade it, or yeah. remaking it, or remade it, and I'm like, no, yeah. come on, just do you stay away, please. <laughs> Yeah, I, that, I think you're right. I think they uh, got the reboot here. And I'm not sure if it's been shot yet or if it's still... I think it was. It, it, was it may like, already be out. I mean, how do you... Yeah, how do you... Yeah, Which which yeah. tells us how good it was if we don't even know. Right, right. yeah. Yeah, 2016 it came out. Hmm. Um, I mean, maybe maybe it was okay. Hey, you know what? Let's let's do some interactivity. Listen, if you got your own famous like Jesus film or Easter film, give us a call five zero three three nine five five zero four zero. Close. And, uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, ben Hur, the original Ben Hur, the ben, one we uh, know and love. Yeah, Charlton Heston, a William Wyler film. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And that uh, so Ben Hur is not really a Jesus thing, but Jesus is kind of a side character. He kind of like he, shows up at one moment. He makes a cameo appearance yeah. almost. And you don't yeah. even see him, right? You see like the back of him or yeah. the sh- shadow of him. Yeah, it's like, "Hey, hey." Yeah. And and I now this was based I read I believe it was based on a novel from um mm-hmm. Boy, uh it was um yeah, 1880. Lou Wallace's 1880 novel Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ. Yeah. So, and this one, 550 pages, Been Here a Tale of the Christ, which actually we know, because isn't it at the beginning of the movie they they have the book or something? I think. Something like that, yeah. Oh. Man, it's been years since I've I seen know. that movie. They used to play on television all the time, oh. like around this time. On ABC. Right? Yeah. It'd be like, Ben Hur. It, it's just all you remember. And Ten like, Commandments, too, right? They yeah. would do a yeah. chest in and that. Yeah. Yeah. And all, all, all I can remember from Ben Hur, all. All I can remember is it's just chariot, chariot, yes. chariot, chariots, chariots with blades, chariots of fire, chariots, chariots, chariots. Yeah. That's all you remember. Everything else is like, oh, yeah, Jesus shows up in the end and says hi or something. But it's just chariot, chariots. chariots, chariots. Man, Jesus was in a chariot, man. Yeah. And it's like, nah, it's been years since I've seen Ben here. Another movie I have to uh, watch. For the first again. time the film was made, 1925. Silent. Silent film. Ben Hur. Who did that star? Mary Pickford and uh, Tom Mix. A very young Harold Ron Floyd. Navarro, May McKenna, Barry Bronson. I don't know. A yeah. bear, somewhere a Barry Bronson. Silent, silent. So, I mean, you know, it's ripe yeah. for the picking. Um, 1959 is the one we remember with Charlton Heston. MGM film adaptation. Uh, tens of millions and won 11 Academy Awards mm. in 1960. Yes. Uh, it was, <laughs> oh, this is always good. It was blessed by Pope Leo, the X1, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. Pope Leo, <laughs> I always got to do that with the, <laughs> the Roman numerals, right? <laughs> Pope Leo, the, it was blessed by Pope Leo, the 8th, the first yeah. novel ever to receive such praise. A papal blessing. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Ben Hur on your uh, on your uh, Holy Week, uh, uh, not reading. Well, you could read the book too, but watch sure. watch a movie. Sure. So that's that's the religious. So then Good Friday, mm-hmm. and uh, I okay. So I I think out of other than like Christmas, which is like you know oh. Jesus was born, and then Santa Claus came and brought you a train and put it under a, a thing. It's like Saint Nicholas. Yeah. Seems plausible. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the I I actually kind of liked Good Friday, mm-hmm. and because Good Friday is like the most depressing of the Christian days. Yes, because it's when the Savior of of Christianity. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, by happenstance, named Jesus Christ. Christianity is a Man. crap joke. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even wipe the desk off today, so there's <laughs> That's <Monday>. Prince. <gasps> Ooh, wait, that looks like Shroud of Turin. Right. Look, it's 
It's a sign. Uh, just like the spider in the kitchen today. Anyway, mm. I know. I'm. I, don't mm. you love the tangents? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So okay. So uh, I there was a church Lutheran that I went to. Okay. And uh, did they do this with you? Uh, f- Friday. Mm-hmm. Good Friday, mm-hmm. which always was like Good Friday. Yeah. Well, it was a very bad day for Christ. I'm just saying. It would be like... Yeah, uh, the Catholic Church, they, um, Good Friday, when uh, they think, well, what's so good about it, man? The guy was killed, bro. But you, mm-hmm. you, if, if you talk from a, you know, a <laughs> theological standpoint, it's good because it was a fulfillment of, you know... Yeah, but still. Uh, it was just like, oh Yeah. Yeah. Good Friday. Lashes... Because usually Crosses. Good Friday was a day of uh, day of feasting, right? Yeah. And then Saturday was a day of reflection and fasting, and then Sunday, of course, Easter Sunday. And uh, then it's like uh, party like it's nineteen ninety nine. I don't know. Right. But okay. Stations of the Cross, you know. Oh, well, we that. haven't got there yet. No, Slow no, down. no, 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 no. Slow Sorry. down, Jason. Sorry. Uh, this takes time. We've got two hours to fill. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome to. Uh, Holy Week talk. Did, did we mention we we bill ourselves as a news program? <laughs> Breaking right. news program. Breaking news program. <clears throat> anyway, so yeah. Good Friday, yeah, which is a bad day. Uh, good, for, bad, good day for Jesus Christ. Uh, and so we would go to the church, and it was like uh, eleven thirty at night or late at night. Did they do this? Did um, you do, do any of this? And it's late at night. And uh, it was one of, I think, two days where they turn out the lights. Yes. And then they light candles. Candles, yes. And then they'd sing a song in the dark. Yes. Well, actually, it was like in the dark, too. They'd extinguish the candles. It's pitch dark in this cathedral thing. Yeah, yeah. And it was spooky. And yeah. I liked it. I was like, okay, I can kind of get into this. This is kind of cool. And they'd like one soloist would sing. It was like something like the Rugged Cross or some hymn about crosses. Right. It was some hymn about God, but it was like, ooh. <laughs> right. Ooh. And, you know, as a kid, you respond to uh, spooky stuff, scary stories. And, well, the whole optics of it, right? Yeah. it's dark. You got candles. And so as a kid, I mean, some yeah. kids, I guess, would be scared. Yeah. But me, I was like, hey, this is creepy. I like this. Sweet. this sweet. Can we do this every sweet. day in this church? Maybe wear robes and chant and do good weird fr- stuff. Hey, Good Friday is good, man. <laughs> we could uh, join the, uh, what was the name of that? The uh, uh, the the Skull and Crossbones or whatever it is. The Skull and Bones <laughs> Secret Skull- Society. Yeah. At Yale. Please, Yale? sir, I have another. <laughs> the Bush yeah. family. Uh, so, so yeah. So I enjoyed that. Did they do that? Did you? Did they, you they do. Uh, did they? Did they? Yeah, I, I remember um, little known Jason fact number four thirty seven of uh, many m- uh, mid well, mid nineties. Uh, <laughs> I uh, actually uh, believe it or not was on the road to becoming a Catholic priest, and uh, we had the uh, uh, Holy Week service, and uh, we went up to uh, St. Mary's here in Portland and uh, talk about a cool thing, you know, when the lights go out and all the can the sea of candles, but it's such a cavernous sort of uh, cathedral that um, the music, the acoustics, right, just echoes off. You got the candles and it's just, it's just uh, very cool. And uh, that's one of the things I remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, and you then know. you decided not to because you had to um, give up your Eddie Vedder albums. Well, yeah, but it was more basic than that. It's like you can't, you, <laughs> you, you can't be married, and I, I ran into the old wife, and that kind of uh, well, you can, ended that. You, you marry marry the church. Although, uh, believe believe it or not, uh, the this most recent pope he has been advocating a uh, and something that even Pope John Paul II did a couple oh, yeah. times. Was a special dispensation for, uh, uh, you know, uh, people who convert from like uh, Episcopalian or whatever, and they're yeah, and they want to be a Catholic priest. They'll actually let you be married and be a priest. Well, that's the that's not uh, 
Is that a proposal? Is that happening? Uh, there's a more general proposal that they're looking to reform. Uh, uh, although I don't think I still think we're quite a bit of ways from uh, that uh, even being seriously talked about. But there have been more increasingly what they call special dispensations, and mm-hmm. uh, uh, if you were a a guy that may have uh, gone through uh, uh, seminary and maybe you left due to uh, well, you know, the the calling wasn't for you and maybe you uh, uh, got married or whatever. Uh, they sometimes put up feelers telling you that, you know, yeah, it's not too late. No, no, I, I know. So. I, 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 going to the Catholic high school, I know that that was yeah. stuff that, that happened. Yeah. Especially in the American church. Yes. yes. And we could go down a rat hole of the clergy and the church and all sorts of cultural kind of things, uh, my own personal observations of that. But I don't think we need to do that during No, that. I mean, we could we, we could go down around. And then that's, the, that's one of the things that's kind of eye-opening is well, when you start taking theology classes and church history, because you know, I'm a history buff. Yeah. And so I fell right into the church history, right? Uh, you know, you soon realize, wait a minute, you mean... What are, you, what are you talking about? Early church guys were married. That's not yeah. that's not what I was taught in Sunday school. And then the Protestants were like, eh. yeah, don't even get Martin me Luther. To, Martin Luther. <laughs> I looked that right. Up. And don't get me started on 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 Jesus's name. Really, isn't Jesus? We could talk for hours about that. Oh. Anyway, I don't want to pick off. Jesus anyway. wasn't born on Christmas Day. Right. When Santa actually, brings the toys. Actually, I want to dispel. He was born sometime in the spring. And Easter. Uh, yeah. Bunny. Day. Yeah. Yeah. Because all of these things, dates were appropriated from the pagan calendar by the Catholic Church. Yep. If you look up your real history. Constantine, when he, uh, quick uh, history note for you. Constantine, when he uh, converted to uh, Catholicism, which, by the way, uh, the word Catholic is a derivative of the third century word, Catholica, which means universal. So Catholic Church, the universal Mm -hmm. church. Um uh, so Constantine says, "Hey, you know, now I'm a, now that I'm a Christian and stuff, man. What's up with all these gods? We got to do something about this, man. Because, mm-hmm. you know, we got to have a- lots of pagans. So, uh, what do you say during Saturnalia? We just sort of uh, say Jesus was born then, and we call it Christmas. You know, Christ's Mass, mm-hmm. and uh, there you go. And that's that. That's how that came about. And we remember Jason when Constantine uh, was alive." No, I just Wikipedia it. Oh sure, because why not? No, why not? We're we, informative. We, we, we and fact Con- check. Me and Connie were like that. Man. Uh, Constantine the Great. There is this yeah. uh, the thing there. Emperor twenty fifth July three o six A D. Yes. To twenty uh, ninth October three twelve A D. So six year run. Mm-hmm. Six years. Oh wait, three twenty four. And then 337. Okay. So about what? I think he was, what, 13, 14 years. Yeah. Yeah. He sat on that. You have a mom. Was his mom converted to Catholicism? Would that how that worked? Yeah, his mom was responsible for converting him to Catholicism. Yeah. She was very... uh, See, this is the news, folks. This is the (laughs) Byzantine Empire. This actually does work into the news, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of like the the Pope. Pope. Kind of the real first modern... Pope uh, Constantine. He kind of assimilated <laughs> into that. Yeah. Uh, of course. Constantinople. That was like. It's the East and Western Empire, which yeah. turned into the Byzantine Empire. You, so. You people know it as Istanbul. Mm-hmm. Us purists, we still call it Constantinople. Call it Constantinople. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Thank you. They might be giants. Um, <laughs> right. So in the news, and, yeah. and and this has been an hour and almost 15 minute lead up to in the news, right? Uh, on Palm Sunday in Egypt, uh, there was a terrorist attack. Yeah. Um, and Coptic uh, Church, right? In the Coptic Church, yeah. Coptic Christian Church, which is, uh, I think they said it was like 10. 10% minority yes. in Egypt. Yes. Because there are Christians out there, too. And everyone kind of lives in peace and harmony. Uh, the IS guys, whatever. You know, those guys, the bad guys. The bad guys. They claimed responsibility. responsibility we'll look yeah. it up. 
But it's interesting yeah. because I had just recently read a bunch of stuff about Egypt. We had talked about El Sisi, the leader of Egypt, had just met with Trump last week. Right. But the head of the Coptic Church is a pope. Not not Pope Francis. Yeah. Not Pope Francis in Rome. No. A different pope. Yes. And it got me thinking, Jason. Mm-hmm. How many popes are there? Uh, well, there's several. Well, there are. Uh, member Pope is an again derivative of uh, what you call him, Papa Father. Mm-hmm. You know, and all and in Catholic Church theology teaches that uh, uh, the Pope uh, is um, the uh, traditional head of the Church or the Bishop of Rome, uh, which can trace its lineage back to Peter. You know, Peter upon this rock I build this church. Yeah, but you know they have the and then uh, we have uh, the 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 schism. Uh, of the East and West, where you see a lot of, you know, the Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Coptics, uh, around the year 1000, and then we come up even more to the Reformation. Luther says, hey, uh, I'm not digging uh, all this uh, corruption here within the church. I'm going to go ahead and nail my theses to the Here it is right door. here. Quora. Yes. So according to Quora, there are three or four popes, depending okay. on how you count the Greek Orthodox guy. Yeah, the, sometimes they use, but usually he's uh, defined as, uh, they call him the patriarch. Mm-hmm. He's the grand patriarch. Of, That's right. Uh, orth- Orthodox. But he's kind of a, a, a pope. Right. A pope guy. Yeah, he's the head of, yeah. Uh-huh. And it won't come up now because, you know. Uh, but, yeah, uh, so this guy. And the Coptics have one. Um, yeah, Pope, uh, Coptic Pope. I'll give you his name. I think even the Russians. Pro- it starts with a P. Orthodox. Um, it, he is the Pope of the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria. Yes. So this is him right here. This is uh, Pope... Uh, Tawadros the second. I actually had looked this up uh, a few weeks ago, and then it so happened that uh, so this is guy in the right. He's got a big beard. He's oh, yeah. got an interesting hat. I think personally, yeah. if you're going to be a pope, okay. you need an interesting beard yeah. and an interesting hat. I guess yeah. Francis doesn't have a beard. Doesn't does have he? the beard, but he does wear the miter. Has an interesting know. hat. Yep, a miter um, hat. Yep. So uh, uh, this is uh, Tawadros the yeah. second, and I think at the big, uh, big, he was giving in the news. He was actually giving a, a Palm Sunday thing at, at the big, uh, at his, the big anchor kind of temple there yeah. of Alexandria. He's the bishop of Alexandria, and that's where one of the bombings happened. He was okay. He escaped the bombing. Yeah, very sad. But it was a uh, yeah uh, several. Uh, We'll take a look here and see. Um, so that is a, uh, a, a kind of a bad deal there. Yeah. Egypt on edge as Christians bury dead from church attacks. This is, you know, we try to have fun on Mondays, and then, but this is not the fun part. Happy uh, Monday, folks. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, it was uh, St. Mark's Cathedral in Alexandria. That's yeah. actually where... Mm-hmm. Quadrus. Um, just call killed. him. Just call him Mr. T. Mr. T. I like yeah. that. Another twenty-eight were killed inside St. George's, St. George's Church in the Nile Delta city of Tanta. Mm-hmm. So, but St. Yeah. Mark's Cathedral, I think, is the big is where he, the Bishop of Alexandria, that the Pope of the Coptic Church. Right. What do we know of the Coptics, Jason? <laughs> What do we know of the Coptics? I, I love it. It's like it's it's like Jason now has to like uh, <laughs> do a, a master's college study to start doing this show. It's like yeah. uh, Coptics is a uh, early splinter off of the Orthodox Church. Uh, yes, it is mainly, um, of course, in in e- Egypt and the uh, upper uh, upper uh, branch of uh, Africa. Some in Libya. According to tradition, Someone the church Tunisia. was established by Saint Mark. Yeah, 
Hence, uh, St. Mark's uh, Cathedral being yes. the main area. An apostle and evangelist in the middle of the first century, approximately 42 AD. The head of the church and the see of Alexandria is the patriarch of Alexandria on the Holy See of St. Mark. There we go. Who also carries the title of Coptic Pope, which I think yes. is kind of a cool title. Yes. It's like, what are you? And Coptic Pope. Yeah, and of course, their Bible has books, uh, believe it or yeah. not, that are not included in the uh, Catholic and or King James Version. Imagine that. Imagine that. And uh, that's another thing is when you, uh, funny how when you start uh, taking theology classes and stuff, part of your reading is some of the books that didn't make it to the final stuff, and that's quite an eye-opening, and in some cases, jarring, uh, uh, you know, interesting experience because they talk about how and why they weren't included at the final. A lot of it was politi- right. a lot of it was political, more political than you think, folks. It was uh, yeah. the Sweet Sixteen of books. It was the final, <laughs> the four final four, right? Of books, right? It's like, oh, I think they, I think they held the uh, final four that year. The Council of Trent, yeah, exactly. Um, count, nah, actually, no, Council of Nicaea. But what is this uh, book called? The Tar Heels. I do not understand. <laughs> right. That's a uh, second book of Tar Heels, uh, yeah. verse 36. <laughs> <laughs> book 36 verse uh, 16. yeah i mean you know this is this 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 uh could uh delve easily into the history religion podcast on this ah. box uh, which <laughs> might happen yeah. uh but it won't it won't but anyway, so yeah. Coptic Pope, uh, Coptic Pope. Uh, there was a thing in the news, a bad terrorism attack, yeah. very sad, on uh, religious day. Um, you know, the world's on fire. Hey, <laughs> uh, that sucks. Cue midnight oil, the beds are burning. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorites. Yeah. In the meantime, yeah. uh, in the news, <laughs> I look in at the, the time. The when did we get to the news? Uh, <laughs> If Doc Normal doesn't talk about his damn film strips in Sunday school. Uh, so That's what I like about the show is it can literally go anywhere and usually does in yeah. a hurry, you know? And it's uh, like that's good. a show about nothing. It's a, right. <laughs> we are Seinfeld, folks. <laughs> we are the Seinfeld of the news. Gosh, that makes Ooh, me either... We call it Seinfeld of the news. Right. So um, that either makes me Newman or George. Yeah. One of the two. What? I just, just want... that. Yeah, just can we get Elaine as a guest? Ooh, yeah. that would be cool. Uh, Neil M. Gorsuch sworn in as 113th Supreme Court yeah. Justice. They call it Associate Justice, right? Yes, he's uh, he's a uh, he's he's a probie. He's on he's on probation. I'm associated yeah. with these guys. Uh, he was sworn in, I believe, by is it Justice Kennedy? Did you follow this? Who he clerked for? I think so. Yeah, nope. I, I saw the picture, and I, it, I I I either put it down as either Kennedy mm-hmm. or Roberts. No, was it like, wasn't oh. Roberts. I think it was Kennedy. Some white dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's Kennedy. Yeah. Uh, yes, just uh, on sunny spring day, according to the Washington Post, on a sunny spring day at the White House Rose Garden, Justice Anthony M. Kennedy, for whom the 49-year-old Gorsuch once served as a clerk, led him to a second oath that justices take to impartially interpret the laws and do equal right to the poor and to the rich. A second oath. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Yeah. Now that you've done the first oath, here's the second oath. <laughs> the secret oath. I promise to be crazy. <laughs> right. Right. When I'm not looking, put on a silly hat and scare Judge Ginsburg with it. Ah! Poor Judge Ginsburg. She's always getting... People are always punking her, you know? Okay. I, I was gonna make a just. I was gonna make a Thomas joke, and I just yeah. like mm, maybe. Oh, Clarence Thomas, yeah, yeah, well. not go there, Mister Jokester. What was that? What was the girl's name? Anita Hill. Anita Hill. Yes. Anita Hill. Yes. yes. Anyway, uh, oh, here's the oath. Do you want to hear the oath? Sure. Why not? Jason. Yes. Raise your right hand. Okay. Put your hand on the Bible. Uh, uh, there's no Bible. Put it on your pad. I'll put it on the. I'll put it on the cup. Put your hand on the Bible. Oh. Raise your right hand. Hand on the butt. Jason. Yeah. Well, who? Put your hand on the butt. Right. Yeah. J- yeah. Here I am. You know what that's from, right? No. The Three Stooges. Oh, okay. Come on. You stooged me on a Monday. Come on. The Stooges. I'm, I'm still trying to take off my Catholic hat. Is it Stooges? <laughs> the Stooges. This is like a five minute routine. Right. Put your hand, put your hand on the butt. Raise your right hand. Oh. 
Is Who's, it curly, who? right? It's curly. It's always curly. What? 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 Knock, 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 knock. Okay. So <laughs> that's exactly part of the, the swearing in. Okay. So right. here's your right hand. Okay. I. I. Uh, state your name. State your name. State your name. <laughs> I think that's. <laughs> I think that's actually part of the. Remember, routine. remember in Animal House too, you yeah. know, where they're yeah. they're all downstairs in the basement getting sworn in. Uh, I I state your name, state, state your, your name, name. and no, then uh, I, Hoover, the president, just kind of like, yeah. you know, but I'm like, oh god, here we go. I, I think they lifted that from the Stooges. Oh yeah, I mean, come yeah. on. You know, it's, it, it all goes back to, like, the Stooges or the Marx Brothers, right? You know? Oh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. So, uh, uh, do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Or affirm. Or affirm. So, either. You can either swear <laughs> or affirm. Yeah. Uh, like, what are these options? Uh, that I support and defend the Constitution of the United States. I support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith to the allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation somewhat under duress. Without any mental reservation. With a whole lot of mental uh, reservations. Or purpose of evasion. And I'm trying to evade a lot of stuff. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. I will sometimes discharge it when I'm in the mood. The duties of the office on which I'm about to enter. Some of the crap that I'm supposed to do. So help me God. Ooh, I gotta do that like Charlton Heston. Yeah. So help me God. All right. That is, uh, you have just taken the oath wow. of office for Sweet. the Supreme Court. Cool. I get a cool robe. Yeah. You know, the cool thing is, on the robes, you know, you think, oh, everything's all, dude, those guys are all wearing shorts, right? There's no way that they're all wearing suits and stuff. Uh, I'd be wearing Bermuda shorts and some Birkenstocks underneath that sort of stuff. That's just me, though. That's that's how this Supreme Court justice rolls. That's what I do. Right. So, so you know. So, what's your uh, principal yeah. duty, Justice Allen? Oh, your my principal. My, your number one duty that you just swore on. To, uh, I'll sit there and I'll get my little robe. You know, it's mm-hmm. tailored for me. Cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'll sit there and mm-hmm. and uh, as you know, the arguments are being given. Mm-hmm. It's my job to do this. Mm. 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 And then I get up and walk away, and then I'll issue a report like two weeks later. That's what I'm going to do. I need a buzzer here. Uh, Sorry. No? You're wrong. But that's cool. But you're wrong. But I'm sitting there. I'm doing this. Mm. Your principal duty mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. is to mm. support and defend mm. the Constitution of the United States. No more, no less. Okay, so let's <laughs> defend. All right, I defended. Who do I take on now? You know. Yeah. I'll run around in a robe trying to whoop, trying to whoop ass. Anyway. So that's what you do. Support Sorry. and defend the Constitution. Okay, I support Not and defend make it. up crap in your yeah. own head. Oh. Well, then Just what's, look at the Constitution and go. What's the perks of being a justice then? Right. Although they probably do get a cool pension plan. Uh, I think they probably have a cool uh, executive lounge. I mean, come on, dude. They're hanging out in their robes. They're, you know. So the question, so the question is. Continental breakfast. Uh, Gorsuch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Isn't the other guy is replacing uh, Scalia, uh, Scalia, right? Scalia. Yeah. Uh, who died suddenly. Yes. Bing. Yes. Heart attack, right? Mm. Uh, anyway. Yeah. And Scalia was he a strict constitutionalist? He was, um, yeah. He he was more uh, one of the uh, more conservative, mm-hmm. and he he uh, described himself as a strict constitutionalist. Yeah. So, if you interpret, so how how would you d- define his role as a justice? I mean, he was he's kind of uh, yeah. You know what, and and then Gorsuch, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows about this guy? I mean, he did a well, he wonderful like job a, of saying nothing during his during his confirmation. Fourteen hours of absolutely nothing. Yeah. He. Uh, what what what's the what's the word he said over and over? He did it like seventeen times. Golly or G or something like that, and it's like he said absolutely nothing. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember one time towards the end, Franken is like, literally like, we have no idea what you stand for at all. Mm-hmm. Because you've said absolutely nothing. And it's like, well, then he's, you know, he's done a good job then because that's what, you know. Don't say nothing, man. Scalia was a strong defender of the powers of the executive branch, yeah. believing presidential power should be paramount in many areas. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got this little thing called Congress over here, too. Uh, they make laws. Uh, represent the people. Uh, checks and balances. Mm-hmm. Uh, he opposed affirmative action and other <laughs> policies that treated minorities as special groups. This is where Scalia's strict constitutional you know you you do don't it's constitution says everyone under the law but we don't make special rules for special people that would be his conservative interpretation yeah the the argument against is that that's not reality and to support and defend the constitution and to protect minority groups that are being uh, not constitutionally supported, you need laws like affirmative action, things like that. And he was against that. That was Scalia. Would that be the uh, interpretation? Yep, yeah, that's pretty fair representative of that. He, uh, you know, he, a lot of that, you got to understand, a lot of this is a cop out. It, when, when you, you know, I'm a strict constitutionalist, so I cannot, dude, you went against affirmative action, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we. I mean we know what you really think. Don't hide behind. Uh, well, I'm a strict constitutionalist, like the others aren't. Well, uh, yeah, I mean the you know? the idea is that there's these uh, additional laws that yeah. reinforce the con- the spirit of the constitution, the spirit of the law. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But then someone can argue that boy, we've got too many laws. Not an argument against affirmative action, but against all sorts of other interesting ideas. Yeah. Um, in, in you know, uh, well, you know, we can't make any special laws for people. I mean, until some history teacher politely points them on the shoulder and says, "Hey, dude, slavery was legal for a long time." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah. He filed separate opinions in many cases and often castigated the court's majority in his minority opinions using scathing language. Oh, he, he was a, uh, in the bad sense of the word, he was a curmudgeon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he was. He Scalia was a, was a curmudgeon. So, and yeah. Gorsuch, we know nothing about you. you no. You're, I don't know. He, he does a wonderful job of... Nothing. And this happened last week uh, with all the news when we were gone and yeah. in the windstorm and internet, uh, along with uh, 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 the nuclear op- option being deployed. Yes. As someone said, we. I'd rather we don't call it that, <laughs> considering that there's other nuclear options that are happening <laughs> out there at North Korea. Right. Um, uh, so as, as the carrier fleet is he- busily heading yes. towards the Korean Peninsula. Yes. Uh. The USS Carl Vinson. Uh, oh. Strike group attack or whatever they call them. Yeah, Armada uh, is uh, heading up to uh, the South Korea area. There, they have been repositioned. They were actually heading down, I think, down south for somewhere. They were heading somewhere else, yeah. and then they said, "Oh, hey, uh, yeah, could you could you guys turn around?" And so they're heading up there because yeah. uh, Kim Jong Un, one of our favorite people, mm, not nice. really, not really, he's a perennial favorite. Uh, you know, is yeah. uh, doing whatever Kim Jong Uns do in the world. Whatever Uns do, yeah. He's, he's <laughs> whatever the Uns do, uh, yeah. and one of those things was uh, launching a little missile off into the sea, while uh, Trump met with uh, President Xi from China. Right. Just to say, th- this guy, this guy in North Korea, it's like, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still, it, it, yeah. It's like the, the kid sitting in the back of the class pulling yeah. the girl's pigtails yeah, yeah. And, and and poking. Like, I had, you know, every, I think every kid, you had some kid in the back of it poke you and stuff. It's like, would you knock it off? Right. You know, just knock it off. <laughs> He's that guy. Yeah. I got yeah. a nuke. I got a missile. So you're saying as in class, you, you are ooned. Yes. Gotcha. 
So, uh, yeah, so the Senate did that. And, uh, How about North the 50, 59 Tomahawk missiles? Uh, and we missed. Did, did that happen on, was that Friday? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. that we had the uh, Syria. We had a, uh, it was kind of breaking o- over like Thursday. You know, there was yeah. like a chemical attack. Uh, yeah. People died. And then uh, Trump ordered uh, 59 Tomahawk missiles at one point. Six million dollars a piece mm-hmm. to um, do the math, folks. Hit a a uh, airfield. Air, airfield. Yeah. Um, but there were reports that uh, planes were taking off from there. Yeah. Afterwards, um, the one of the things was they asked Trump, "Didn't you say that you could leave Assad in power?" And Trump's response was, "Yeah, uh, things change. <laughs> things change. Yeah, you know." Yeah. Which, I, I don't know. Yeah. All right. So things changed. Yeah. So the really the issue there is is what you know how are we doing with the what are we doing with the Russians now? What I've seen in the news uh, just uh, today is we've got different messages from uh, Nikki Haley over mm-hmm. at the UN and uh, Secretary of State Tillerson yeah. and uh, our our security head, uh, what's that guy, the bald guy, General Four Stars. McMasters. McMasters. Oh, yes, yes of course. Okay. McMasters. Like, like if, look, look, uh, let's be honest. Okay. If you're going to be a general. Yeah. If you're going to be in the military, if you're yeah. going to be a general, be a McMasters. Right. I mean, come on. Right. I mean, that's the best name. He is the stereotypical, prototypical, you know, uh, joint chief sort of dude, you know. He's the guy sitting in the third row in the Doctor Strange love, right? And he's bald. No hair. He's bald. That's what I like. I mean, you know, you're not supposed to boot camp, shave it down, you know. I, I, I don't trust the guys with the hair. This is why I never went in the military. No, not not in my military. Yeah, yeah. You want a bald. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. shave it down, you know? I mean, it, that's why, I mean, I you could join the military or mm, I think I'll grow my hair out and join a Listen, rock band. They are too busy. Uh, exclusive. They are too busy making the world safe for democracy to have bad hair days. Mm-hmm. Okay? They're at the... They're just throwing that out of the equation right there. I'm not going to worry about it. Screw combs. Give me nukes. You know, that's what's going on. Yeah, no, no, no. It's like it's a, it's a, I take a two and a half minute cold shower. <laughs> I shine my bald head. And a bowl of Wheaties and bombed Libya. You know. Successful morning. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Put you in a blue coat there. Yeah. Put four stars on each of your shoulders. I Maybe do that. Put a little, uh, yep. put a little stuff in there. You could, you could. Can I McMaster it up? Yeah. Think, oh, uh, that'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. It's like, mm. yeah. And uh, scare the bejesus out of, you will not date my daughter. You yeah. Know, stuff like that. Yeah. I, I could get away with that. Completely. That'd be cool. Completely. We'll work on that. So, get one of our interns to handle that. Yeah. So, uh, I, so, as the Trump administration has shown, I think the key here, and I can't remember, don't. It, you can read it yourself. You can look up who said what. Yeah. But uh, the question is, uh, Assad and ISIS or Assad with ISIS or ISIS and Assad? Well, it's never going to be like right. ISIS. It's never going to be the terrorists, right? Yeah. I think I think all of them agree on one thing. <laughs> Get rid of terrorists. You know, right. mark that down. God, but, when you, um, but then it's like Assad stays or Assad goes. And uh, regime change, which was a big part of Trump's campaign, he said, yeah. hey, uh, I don't, you know, we're, let's let's change this up. We don't go in there and change regimes and things like that. And now it's like, maybe we do. And so uh, Secretary of State says one thing. UN Secretary Ambassador says another thing. Yeah. And uh, it sounds like, and in the meantime, over the weekend, the big news politically was, and we have a political show. You guys didn't talk about that. Well, oh, we do yeah. local stuff. But but the mm-hmm. other piece was the uh, the cabinet, the shakeup, the behind the scenes, the factions, uh, and and every uh, what I read, I think it was the Washington Post. Okay, yeah, we, we could talk about that on Wednesday. That'd be fun. Yeah, but what what yeah. we heard about was that uh, you know each faction is vying for attention from the president. And right. So it's like yeah. uh, usually a president or a leader traditionally would come in and say. 
here's what we're doing. Yeah. Here's what I believe. Here's here's align your ships. And if you don't, right, too bad. Yeah. But if you have a president that you're like, well, what do we think about this? Assad, yes. Assad, no. Missiles, yes. Missiles, no. We don't know. You know. And then you have the people who say, who are for us. You know. Leave them there. Don't leave them there. Just an example. But there's all kinds of different political agendas that people in mm -hmm. an administration and in a cabinet would have, like yeah. a Bannon versus a Kushner versus a nationalist versus right. globalist versus right. yeah. And so, uh, and they what what the story is is that they're not getting direction from the president, and so it's a proximity issue so in other words yeah if if jason you're the president and uh yes. I, I i say well straight in the tie yeah my my opinion is that we should uh you know nuke north korea no oh, god that's a horrible idea <laughs> what am i thinking that's yeah. a horrible example i'm sorry right, right. peace nick says nuke north yeah. um anyway something something and then this guy over here says something else well if i'm like if you and I are meeting together, mm -hmm. and 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 then you're like, okay, yeah, let's do that. Then that means I get a go ahead. Versus if you're meeting with the other guy and you're that guy's getting a go ahead. Yeah, it's kind of chaotic leadership. It is. It is. It reminds me of the leadership of another leader that I read about in history books quite some time ago, where basically. All the people who worked for that leader needed to know which, where the boat, you know, what direction were the boats sailing. And if you didn't know which direction the boats were sailing, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're out. Yeah, it's it, the whole dynamics uh, and really Trump's leadership style, if you, if you can call it that, uh, is uh, just is not very conducive to the executive branch. Uh, the, there is two ruling schools there, and one is Kushner, one is Bannon. Bannon is a nationalist. America, you know, he's the guy behind the whole America First sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Jared is uh, Jared. Every time I think of Jared, I think of the either the the ring store or the guy that's in prison because <laughs> he, you know. right, right. But uh, Kushner, he uh, he's more of the uh, globalist. Uh, School and uh, both of them uh, do not like each other. Uh, it's now just finally surfacing that uh, behind, I guess, behind Kushner's back, Bannon calling him names and everything's not uh, everything's not kosher in Trump land. Uh, so I mean, there's going to be uh, a reckoning on that. Uh, Bannon was dropped off of the National Security Council. Good. Um, and he, uh, I, is it a demotion? Sure, in some ways. Uh, but make no mistake, Bannon still has the ear of the president, um, which is scary in and of itself. And, of course, with Kushner, you wonder, you wonder, how, how is this, I mean, he's meeting with leaders. He, he's, you know, ooh, he's over in Iraq. He's doing this. I, when when I heard and saw that, the first thing that blurted out of my pie hole was, is what what makes this guy an expert? You know, right. I mean, who who is this guy to be sitting in next to world leaders, weighing weighing in on on world changing uh, You're talking policy? About -in -law. I'm talking, yeah, I'm talking all actually. Holy yeah. cow, but Kushner, uh, it's like Kim on one hand, Conway these days. Yeah, she has been shunted. Her? Yeah, she uh, Aww. she's in the doghouse. Aww. Yeah, ever since uh, you know the whole alternative facts. Yes, and sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's been kind of shunted she's away. She's kind of fun. So here's a. Uh, <laughs> she's kind of fun. Yeah. Kellyanne's fun. So here's a, a piece. Uh, yeah. This is not the piece I read, but I did pop and I did sk uh, skim this, and it and it's along the lines of the pieces. I think the Washington Post had another one, and me. Highlighting Washington Post pieces means something because, yeah. you know, I'm not always a big fan. But this is in the Daily Beast. The trouble with Trump's White House is Donald Trump. <laughs> um, file the, file that under no speed. By you Rick know. Wilson. But yeah. it, it looks like a very interesting analysis. Oh, uh, Wilson, he yeah. goes through and talks about uh, 
uh, about what we're talking about right now. If yeah. Bannon is cut loose, the old Washington adage of better to have your enemy inside the tent pissing out will come into play. <laughs> that is, uh, this actually is what I did read. I did read this article. This yeah. is the article I did read. Okay, Rick Wilson, so read yeah. this. Yeah, Rick Wilson, trouble, and he talks about the, the factions uh, fighting uh, inside the White House. And that's important because um, well, there's that's a lot what, of other stuff going on. Yeah. People getting blown up. Well, that's what Trump likes, though. He and a lot of people they have they have a problem with this, and that's the way he ran his and still does run his business. Is that he invites drama and chaos. He likes it. It's a circus to him. He he loves that sort of atmosphere. Well, and where where you can get away with that in, on you know on on Main Street, you know, in in your uh, corporate offices, it just doesn't work real well. At the uh, at the presidential level, a case in point, you're going to say, Jason, explain yourself. I'll explain myself. Listen, when the president has a bad day, the stock market in Zimbabwe goes down, okay? Mm-hmm. A lot of people take their cues from uh, uh, America and the, and the kind of American state of mind, right? Mm-hmm. And when you guy who has a state of mind, which is chaos and drama... It throws uh, a lot of it gets people nervous, right? Well, and, and while in business, you could say, "Well, you know, I'm unpredictable." It doesn't it, it, unpredictable uh, on the world stage. Unpredictable is how you is what you uh, call a uh, third world banana republic despot. Unpredictable. Yeah. yeah well, that's it. Hugo Chavez. Unpredictable. Well, and that's you know that's been the earmark of some of our 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 favorite despots in. Yeah. In history, yeah, is exactly that. If Paul Pot, if you unpredictable, read, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, yeah. It, I I hate making these types of analogies, but if sure. you read anything, good analysis of uh, uh, the uh, Nazi regime mm. and Hitler, mm. it actually it looked from outwardly. As of you know, German, very German, very lockstep German, yeah. but there was a lot of chaos behind the scenes. Goering versus Himmler versus yes, yes. You know, very yeah, Heydrich, much so. very much so. Yeah. And and again, you know, you had the, like, the Night of the Long Knives and things like that. You know, yeah, which were basically purges. Um, I think Saddam Hussein Con- would consolidating be a, power. Yeah, Stalin. You know, it's just it, again, pogroms. We're yeah. not. <laughs> Do not want to compare our president to those people. I don't think the historic comparison is is accurate, even though liberals out there would disagree with me. Liberals, mm. I mean, you liberals, I'm a liberal, whatever. <laughs> but um, but yeah. I think that's a little extreme. But the management style is uh, not necessarily uh, uh, works well historically no. for a political leader. Business leader, maybe. Political no. leader, maybe not so much. The the reason uh, America is looked up to a large part in the world is its stability. Stability, it's yeah. The guy that you know is two in the morning. Checks and balances, baby. Right. And the calm, you know, Eisenhower-ish stoicism. Yeah. You're, you know, and we talked about that off and on before. We talked about, I mean, there is a word for that. You're, you are acting presidential. The buck stops here. The buck stops here. The statesman, right? At the the end of the day, when uh, in presidential politics, when you have, and you do have factions. Sure. Even in the same party, you have these factions within the, you You know. You got the hawks, you got the doves, you got. American politics. Yeah. And always historically with presidents, uh, those factions come to the president and the president ultimately says, this is what we're going to do. Right. By decision, I was elected. Buck stops here. Right. You know. And then you have to deal with all the congressional fallout and all that stuff, too. But that's different in the administration. Sure. That's how it's administered, yes. so to speak. So this is an interesting news item on, um, as we beat this to death. <laughs> um, look at this one, Jason. This just uh-huh. came out an hour ago. Business Insider. The people at Business Insider. Breitbart editors tell staffers to stop writing stories critical of Jared Kushner, sources say. Wow. Those, those there's sources, open journalism there's, for you, huh? Sources say employees at Breitbart News have been asked by senior editors to refrain from writing stories critical of Jared Kushner. Two people familiar with the matter told Business Insiders. New York Times reported over the weekend. 
yeah. that Kushner, a senior White House advisor, had complained to President Donald Trump about the negative coverage he was receiving from the far right website. So, and that's um, that's a uh, Bannon's old uh, deal. Yeah. So um, that's interesting. It it is somewhat in- interesting. It, it, it is. Uh, I think nothing more than Breitbart betting on the fact that Kushner is going to last and Bannon isn't. And I'd so say, they're, well, they're they're picking I, their horse. I think if we're putting the money down, yeah, uh, he's the, he's he's the son-in-law. son-in-law. <laughs> I they're, mean, if you turn against him, he turns on. Uh, I mean, at, from all our uh, being outside and analyzing Trump, President Trump, uh, his closest advisor and closest person in his life is his daughter. Yep, the daughter Monica. and his and his uh, son-in-law. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of people, uh, when we talk about how uh, people make uh, parallels, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I parallel, and this is going to sound weird, but I parallel Trump and his uh, kind of family sort of oligarchy almost sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. I kind I have a, I see a lot of him and the Romanovs, mm-hmm. the way they run sure. and their, their sure. whole mindset of uh, how they conduct themselves and... Uh, so you know, it's nothing. Breitbart, uh, I think, in the they're playing the long game of Steve. We like, yeah, yeah, we know you were one of us and stuff. But let's we, we got to bet on the winner, and I think the winner is going to be Jared because hey, he's family. And at the end of the day, Trump always is uh, loyal to his family, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, oh, I agree. You know, and I, I, look, if if I had a choice between the two. I get that guy out of there, that Bannon guy. Bannon, yeah. Bannon, Bannon is a piece of work. He really is. Uh, and then you've got like uh, you know the the um, Ryan uh, faction, which is represented by Rents Priebus. So you know, Priebus may not be no. long. There, there's a talk uh, within the next two weeks that he will be replaced. Uh, but if 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 he supports the Paul Ryan side, and Paul Ryan is very powerful. Uh, how do how do you get you know? Yeah, how do you, you get rid of that on the inside? He might really need that. Well, I, yeah. Uh, although I, <laughs> the, um, previous, like previous. like watching him during the election cycle. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm a Star Trek fan. We always talk about Star Trek shapeshifter. Yeah. Shape, shape it's just oh, like yeah. it, or or the <clears throat> t2000 from the whatever you know. It's like uh, he, he's he's. He's a lady in the kitchen. He's got a knife coming out of his arm. I mean, right. it's just like he's just so like uh, he he could like just ooze under the he door is. here and come out and say, "Hey, it's right, it's Priebus. How'd you get here?" The, the former on, head show. of the uh, Republican Party yeah. is a chameleon. He's yeah. a hack. He yeah. will suit Am himself right? to fit. Oh yeah, I mean, most definitely shapeshifter. I and mean, it's just yeah, and I think that's also in this in this case as like chief he would of say staff. Seems anything to oh, do whatever needs to. Oh, you bet. Yeah, you, you bet. But I think I think in the next couple of weeks he'll get replaced. And Ryan uh, uh, Ryan's stock has fell uh, when he could not get Trump care through. Mm-hmm. Uh, Trump, you know, Trump's all you know, all about winning, right? Mm-hmm. And it it. Uh, at least the stuff that I've read have said that uh, Trump behind the scenes was livid the fact that uh, Ryan couldn't deliver and McConnell couldn't deliver. And because uh, remember, this is how uh, Trump ate up the primary people is running against the system, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Ryan, you suck. McConnell, you suck. I'm going to come in and drain this one. You know, and that's where uh, Trump started during the primaries. And so he, he, there is no loyalty if you do not deliver for him and what he thinks, uh, uh, in a in a true spectacular Trumpian fashion. I mean, he he will turn on you on a dime, mm-hmm. you know. And that's Priebus. Of course, uh, uh, there's been a lot of talk that Priebus as chief of staff has been one inept dude. And uh, well, I don't think uh, you know skill sets. So yeah, it's like you know one per uh, and. The other thing is I... Well, as chief of staff, you don't want a political hack. You want an administrator. You want yes. a guy in there that runs the show, that runs a yep. tight shift. You don't you, you don't want a guy that's just... And you if know. you look at any presidential administration historically, usually chief of staff goes early in the administration. Yeah. Like, like if they last two years, it's usually because it's 
they get the person. It, it, remember, this is all the campaign people yeah. who made you win. And then you yeah. sort out the actual administration people. Now right. we're in office. Yeah, sure, you still have political advisors and stuff. But, um, you know, Reagan famously. Yes. Um, Donald, was it Donald Regan? And uh, anyway, Don Regan. Yeah, uh, yeah. yada yada. Uh, so, so yeah, you have changes of chiefs of staff, and yeah. uh, wasn't it uh, Obama had um, what's his name, the mayor of Chicago? Oh, uh, Rom, Rom Emanuel. Yeah. Wasn't he chief of yeah. staff, and then he left and became Chicago? He's a, uh, and again yeah. back there, like oh, Rom Emanuel, completely political animal, yep. you know? Yeah. You know, with everything that comes along with that. So, oh, yeah. yeah so anyway, we'll... there's other news. Other news. Do, 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 I do, saved do, one do, thing do, for do. a good news. Excellent. Uh, um, uh, did you see this thing? This <laughs> in bad business news. In you know, at some point, we're just going to be co- controlled by corporations like in RoboCop. Right. Uh, Delta Airlines had tons of problems. You know, there were some big storms. And Delta uh, uh, canceled a whole bunch of flights. Yeah. They booted people off, uh, people uh, just trying to get their flights, and it was a big disaster. <laughs> and Delta is is still reeling from that. Yeah. And, and they're asking, well, the storm, storms are over. What's happening? I know someone who's flying Delta, they got delayed by one day, but they got a hotel or whatnot. So yeah. there's a lot of of people going crazy in Delta. Yeah. Um, and, of course, social media doesn't help. Well, today, right. United Airlines forcibly removed a passenger from yeah. a plane. Why? Because he did not accept the voluntary overbooked, uh, right. we need your seat, and this is for uh, uh, an employees. employee, right? And yeah. it's ugly. It is ugly. They forcibly yeah. removed someone. You heard the for, audio from that? Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, we won't play it. You Why can go are you look doing at it. this? Leave him alone. I don't know uh, what I, I mean. It's just it's like disturbing. Yeah. United CEO apologizes after video of O'Hare passenger dragged. Literally, literally, folks, this guy was dragged down the aisle. Oh, yeah. It, Real nice. Like, this is where I want to do business with this airline. You ever seen those uh, old um, newsreel footage of uh, the civil rights? Yeah, protests and they're getting dragged off almost by their hair. So th- it's almost like kind of like that. So the story is, yeah. and anyone who flies knows this. Yeah, uh, for whatever reason, uh, companies oversell flights. Yeah, or they overbook or whatever. And people know if they, oh we have a full flight today, well that means it's oversold. And then they come out and they say, well hey, does anyone do they need to take a flight? And we'll give you this perk or that perk, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. like we'll give you four hundred dollars. I mean, this was a flight out of Chicago, which I think is their one of their hubs. Yes, down, uh-huh. down south somewhere. And it's like, and then they were hey four hundred dollar voucher or whatever. Now here's the problem. Uh, if you're flying on business or family matters or whatever, sometimes it's like you can't. T- it's like, hey, I Time can't, can't do yeah. it. So they basically told this person, uh, and, and it was for United employees. I think maybe it was a flight crew had to get somewhere. Because, you know, you, that's how they, like, say you've got a flight crew, like uh, a cabin crew, yeah. even pilots and stuff. Sometimes if you're on a flight, it's like, oh, there's pilots and people on the flight because they're flying somewhere to get a plane so it might have been one of those situations it sounds to me like that right but but they literally couldn't get anyone and they they physically removed a guy Mm. just physically removed a paid a paid for seat that's like jason i'll sell you a candy bar (laughs) i want that candy bar back Right, yeah. I will forcibly remove that candy bar out of your mouth. So United CEO apologized after a video of O'Hare passenger dragged from flight goes viral. Yeah. Thank God for social media. Yeah. Videos. Here, we'll just pull it up. Pull this up. Videos of a United Airlines passenger being forcibly dragged from his seat on a Sunday overbooked flight at O'Hare International Airport have been viewed more than one million times, and the airline CEO on Monday called the incident an upset event for all of us here at United. Golly, golly, yeah. golly gosh. Let's see yeah. what uh, Oscar Munoz said. Mm-hmm. I apologize for having to re 
having to reaccommodate these customers. I reaccommodate. <laughs> so uh, the funny thing is, getting wow. dragged out of dragged dragged out by your hair out of an wow. airplane is reaccommodate. Wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, I apologize for having to reaccommodate these customers. <laughs> oh, I apologize for having to. This is like Pepsi's apology for that commercial where they apologize to Kendall Jenner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it was like they didn't go. Oh yeah, we suck. Where we apologize to all of you for this stupid thing. For no, we apologize to, to Kendall this. Jenner. Right. But anyway, I apologize for having to reaccommodate these customers. Our team is moving with a sense of urgency to work with the authorities and conduct our own detailed review of what happened. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sitting there. Munoz says the airline is trying to reach the passenger to further address and resolve this situation. Lawsuit. Yep. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, yeah. and baby. So I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm reading this, and I'm like, uh-huh. And, and the wife, she's like, uh, there's going to be a lawsuit over this, right? And, I was, and there should be. I, I was like, I would. I, I think my uh, reply was, I think it's a safe bet that there will be some litigation out of this. You know. Well, this is, you know, every. This is pretty brutal. Every lawyer has has out of their seat when they saw that. They're probably trying to get a hold of this guy right yeah. now. Hey, help! You know. They first offered four hundred dollars, and uh, then they increased it to eight hundred dollars. So it was. I mean, wow. and surprise, but you know. <sighs> Look, if on a flight, you got to take a flight. You got to be somewhere. Business on a Sunday night, too. Yeah. I mean, uh, that that very much could be, I need to be in the office Monday morning. Oh, boy. I pray that this guy had to be in the office Monday morning for a meeting. Because, yeah. oh. And and do you think they're going to settle it out of court? Mm? Oh, you bet. Oh, yeah. They, they're going to want to bury this. Uh, but this is how fast and deep. Remember, we used to have. Yeah. Remember back in the day. Just think about back in the old curmudgeonly no. days, when we had things like consumer protection laws. Sure. When we had a government that protected the individual consumer. Didn't Nader do that for a long time? Consumer uh, protection. I, I don't guy? know that name. Who's who's that guy that did the consumer protection? I thing? just don't know that name. Mm. Nader, you say? A, uh, maybe he was uh, an environment. Ralph Nader. I would not. No. I don't. He's. Uh, oh look, there's nothing. No Wikipedia. He's been erased from history. <laughs> anyway, uh, right. he was unsafe at any speed. Um, so uh, yes, Ralph Nader. Look him up. Yeah, no, no somebody else. Uh, I just spit his name out. But Nader. To... Nader. But but we had things like that, and as we talk about the law and the Supreme Court, uh, corporations uh, get more um, legal protection yeah. by our Congress. Look up uh, vaccinations, for mm-hmm. example, and vaccination safety right. and uh, litigation and liability, uh, for example. Uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, we need we need more of this. We need more people filming on their cell phones and uh, kind of attacking back because this is just stupid. Come on, right? Brown shirt and dragging a guy off of a plane because you. What's up with the managers at that level? They they had to have known that this is not. I mean, even on the ground, it's not going to go over well. There's got to be some sort of resolution rather than physically pulling the guy off the plane. I mean, that's just you're bad. Pressing curmudgeonly, doc, normal thought. Yes, is a society that basically creates situations where you, as an individual, cannot yeah. make individual choices and decisions that are moral. Mm. And correct mm. because you are either into institutions or the government or will violate some tiny little bureaucratic policy. law or policy <laughs> yeah. is a society that's doomed because yeah. you yeah. cannot individually and morally make decisions. Hence, you see great societies that yeah. fall into fascism. Sure. Uh be careful of this America because that's what will happen. And your point, your point is yeah. excellent, Jason. It is like it is a symptom of this. It's like where, where were the people? Right. This was a policy. We need to get these. Should people. Been, we can't problem solve this. But even yeah, even even beyond policy, is uh, a manager or a supervisor at that trench level right there should have known that this is not going to go well. 
we but need, when you have it and and the, your yeah. manager up above is going to fire you or reprimand that's right. you that's or true. whatever because how dare you you didn't get those employees on the plane and yeah. you have a, a mortgage you have a student loan you have kids to put through college this is how it works I agree. <laughs> not, not, not so that clear is cut, your, is it? That yeah. is your happy thought for the day. But that's something we'll probably talk more about. Mm-hmm. Something that I really... Um, yeah, the story will get buried fast and deep. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'll be gone. It'll yeah. be like, bury that story how much you want. <laughs> it's going to be more than $800. <laughs> yeah, just to, let's add a few more zeros onto yeah. that. And, you know. I think, I think in cases mm. like that, could you just give him his own plane? Like here's a, here's a seven forty seven. <laughs> Let's just give okay, you your maybe own plan. Maybe a seven forty seven is a little much, yeah. but maybe a thirty seven. This is also new. The first thing, uh, one of the, one of the first things, uh, a uh, lawyer will, if he's worth his salt, is going to oh, tell there's, him there's... you will go on every cable news show mm-hmm. that you can. You are going to plaster this all over the place. But, but, mm. remember and and. Maybe in United, not so much. But remember when the company is a large advertiser that is, of ah, the cable news network. Very true. Uh, that news network is a lot less uh, interested in telling the story of a passenger that's drug off of a plane. That's very true. And we see that often. Yep. Unless you're Bill O'Reilly. Right. And then, well, you can stick around as long as you want if you're Bill well, Holy cow, how many... Uh, that's affecting Fox it is. News. So. How, there's like the, over 50 now, right? They've pulled the plug. Over 50 <laughs> advertisers have decided they're no longer going to... That's right. That's right. Ooh. For Fox. So, so so the word on the street is... Yeah, word on the street. The Tucker Carlson long knives have been drawn, baby. <laughs> He's vulnerable. There's blood in the water. Here comes the sharks, right? Hannity is circling right now. Exactly. You know? dun, 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 exactly. Dun, dun, exactly. Dun, 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 dun. We yeah. got the Captain Kirk versus the lizard guy. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, here comes Hannity. Dun. Tucker Carlson. Uh. What do you think? Do you think it's possible? Oh, yeah. Do you, think, I, you think Bill gets booted from ooh, Fox? Ooh. Possible? Um, if this does not go away... Uh, Think of another bill. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if he'll get fired. Right. Here's what I could see, right? Because people's attention spans yeah, are a, so short now. Yeah. They will they will put uh, him on hiatus. Yes. He'll, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, ta- I'm taking a Kennedy sabbatical. Tucker Carlson. Dun, 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 right. Dun, 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 like circling in the pit, dun, dun, right? Dun, 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 dun. It's like the Fox Hunger Games. <laughs> ah! Exactly. You know. Um. I like that. I like that idea. I like Hannity and... and, Oh, they're circling, dude. They're circling. Tucker Carlson, you know, trying to strengthen. He takes off his bow tie and uses it as a, a you know, a garrot. And a garrot. And then a lady in a robe screams out, stop! Right. Rachel Maddow. (laughs) Right. The the hood goes back, you know. (laughs) What? With Vulcaneers. And it's Rachel Maddow. With Vulcaneers. She looked good in Vulcaneers. What do they call that? Kum Far or Pom? Pong Far. Pong Far. I pong, love that. Yeah. Pong. There's Ra- Rachel in the ears. Ping Pong Pong Far. Ping Pong G <laughs> Far. Kim Jong Un <laughs> Pong Far. Every and, uh, seven years. Oh, God, was not stereotypical. Uh, Jason, you're going to hell. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, Ra- Rachel pulls back her terrible, head. Jason. <laughs> she says, we will serve you in the pit now. Yeah. Semantic attributes 40 cyber attacks. How to did we CIA yeah. linked hacking tools? Yeah. Hello. That's semantic. Yeah. Semantic is uh, they're 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 uh, um yeah. yeah. Semantic. They 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 know they they have the Norton, they had stuff I know from my past. Uh so they're just saying what what are they saying? This is uh, in Reuters. Mm-hmm. Past cyber attacks on scores of organizations around the world were conducted with top secret hacking tools that were exposed recently by the web publisher WikiLeaks, okay. the security researcher Semantic Corporation said on Monday. That means the attacks Okay, that means the attacks were likely conducted by US Central Intelligence Agency. Christians in action posted by WikiLeaks appeared to show internal CIA interesting that is interesting and really not all that surprising i'm sure the i'm sure the christians in action have their footprints and handprints and palm prints all over a lot of stuff 
In fact, if there's something nefarious going on, chances are it is a production brought to you by the Christians in Action. I think that um, I think we're going to wrap up. I think it's pretty much happy news. We're uh, monitoring Ooh. the things here. Uh, there was a yeah. I wa- oh well, we have a little a pen. Uh, you Ooh, know, the pen. French elections are coming up. I think it's next week. And we oui, we. Oui. And she said the uh, French Vichy government, it, yeah, not responsible for uh, <laughs> for uh, rounding up uh, Jews during the Holocaust. Yeah, which Vichy. Yeah. The Vichys did. It wasn't Vichy. That was, that it was, was the. Uh, it was all. Pup- it was all Merkel's fault. Yeah, that was the pu- puppet government installed by Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. If I remember my history right, headed by what Pétain? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't have the quote here, but well, folks, you can do you can do home curmudgeon homework. I don't think that France is responsible. Uh, here, here's her quote. Okay. I don't think that France is responsible for the Valdehave. She declared Sunday in French television. I think that in general, more generally, if there were those responsible, it was those who were in power at the time. This is not France. <laughs> this is not France. So it's, it's yeah, okay. Uh, I, I can't remember uh, the number of that. Um, so that's a you know na- misstep, I guess. So that that made yes. your headlines. But uh, in the good headlines, uh, I told you last night, um, yeah. or last night this morning. Mm-hmm. Who, rem- who can uh, remember? I, I was trying to get to sleep, so I turned on the uh, Soyuz MSO2 Trio returns to Earth ex- ex- Expedition 50, I believe, of the International Space Station. Yeah. Um, I, now I sound like John Batchelor. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, here's a good picture. I yeah. love this. Have you ever watched one of these, Jason? Mm-mm. It's must see TV. Oh, and they play it live on NASA. Let me let me pull the pull the photo up here for you take a look okay so in the background here you see that burned out little thing yeah that's the spaceship that's the space capsule yeah. and the three guys are here and they're sitting in nice comfy seats because they have to because they've been out in space in zero you know weightlessness right. and um and uh, you know it's not like you just get up and run a marathon after that. Um, now, yeah, you're, so you're getting to know uh, gravity again. Yes, uh, reacquainted. Yeah, in a rude way. Like here it is. Uh, mm-hmm. So and and what happens with the Soyuz, the mm-hmm. Russian space, which is the only spaceship that's the only way. That's what. That's how we get humans into space right now. Right. It's yeah. Russian Soyuz or nothing. Okay, Elon Musk, his dragon, not yes, yet flight rated for people, okay. uh, Boeing, their thing, the Orion, the, or, yeah, is it called Orion still? The, the NASA thing. Uh, yeah. Again, not all flight tested for humans. So, gotcha. yes, that's it. Period. No right. space shuttle anymore. And so, um, so what they do is when they come down, it kind of breaks apart in a little capsule. Very successful. This is this thing's like a fifty-year-old uh, uh, spacecraft. So, yeah. and it's the longest-running spacecraft. Mm-hmm. So there you go. It's it's flight tested, and it it parachutes come out. Lots of parachutes, and it just drops right there in the out uh, of the sky. Is it Kazakhstan? I think it's Kazakhstan. Right there in mm. the big field. Um, as opposed to the way we've done it, uh, which is like in the ocean. So, right. and they've yeah. been doing that for years. And then they fly helicopters and trucks. They go find it, and they dig yeah. these guys out. They usually write it up. I mean, literally, the thing's just like laying out of the out there <laughs> in the field. And then they kind of pick it up, and then they open the hatch, and then they pull. They literally have to get these big. And yeah. I've I've watched it. It's not like a thin, lanky Russian guy who goes in and opens the hatch and pulls an astronaut out in in his in their flight suit, his or her flight suit. So the big beefy. It's a big beefy Russian. <laughs> yeah. Big, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's like you know, probably can power lift a little bit, and they lift people out, and they literally carry them over, mm. 
put them on a little thing, then hook them up to monitors and start. Yeah, yeah. I should do. I should play the replay, but uh, we gotta go. <laughs> and then, and then, and then yeah. after they're done, they talk to them. And yeah. Then the they film them. Uh, they're just sitting out there. Yeah. They're just literally like sitting out there in the field. In like the field. literally, that's what, what they're, they're doing. doing. Yeah. Like they're hanging out, hanging out, and then at some point, someone says, yeah. uh, "Dasvidanya" or whatever they say in Russian, and they <laughs> pick each yeah. one up in their seat and walk them over to an inflatable tent, which is a medical Ooh. thing, yeah. and they do some more checkups, and then they pick them up again and put them on a helicopter and fly them back to Man. Space City Space Center. Sounds like an active gig. Yeah. Holy cow. It's crazy. It's, yeah. I, you know, if you're if you're a geek like me and you watch this stuff, you can watch it live, and it's always interesting. It's always interesting to see how the Russians do it. Totally different from, you know, America. We kind of drop a capsule in the ocean, and then right. they fly a helicopter, and then they do a thing, and and then aircraft carrier. Um, yeah. Of course, America used to land a plane down, but. Not so much anymore. We're going to go back to the old ways. <laughs> the curmudgeonly space program We're ways. going old school. You know. Uh, but eventually we could imagine that uh, yeah. that uh, Bezos and Elon Musk with their with their rockets and their landing on platforms, that at some point the idea is, well, you know, maybe it'll just land up right. Right, yeah. Like we've seen. So w- Wouldn't that be novel? Well, that's, that's kind of what they're going yeah. for. But in the meantime, uh, yeah. This it's is... kind of fun. It's kind of fun to watch the the Russians do that. It's it's really fascinating. Yeah. Um. It's it's a good a uh, it's a good uh, uh, tool for insomnia. There was other science yeah. news over the weekend, but I don't remember what it was. And last but not least, Blazer. Are you following the Blazers? Yes. Yes. Uh, the Denver Nuggets' uh, one-point loss to Oklahoma City propelled Portland into the playoffs. Portland with a record right now of 40-40. and 40. Uh, They are in, uh, I mean, to a large degree, uh, Damian Lillard. Holy cow. It's a 59-point uh, 59 59 game. This man single-handedly... Utah Jazz? W- right. Single-handedly willed the team to win. Uh, it, it was... An incredible performance by Lillard. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only fifty nine points, well, but fifty nine points. I mean, yeah, he, no, I... he literally it, one of those guys. Uh, when you watch either game, no matter what sport it is, whether it's baseball, football, he literally single handedly uh, took that team on his shoulders mm-hmm. and won the game for him. You, yeah, you, you fifty nine points. You just don't see that very often. A guy just a single man's will. You know, we will win this game no matter what. And it's so impressive. I mean, the guy. Uh, uh, I mean, he, he. We always thought that you know he was the leader before he is the leader of the Blazers. I mean, he. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah. He. Uh, it, it, it just impressive. Put that up right there. Yeah. Western Conference NBA. Portland uh, with the eighth seed. Eighth yeah. seed. We take on uh, Golden State. So <laughs> that's <laughs> Golden yeah. State. Oh gosh. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, we were the first. Yep. Of course, the Warriors. Uh, yeah. So Nuggets. Nu- it was Nuggets or Blazers. Nuggets. Uh, Blazers won. Yep. Uh, Nuggets lost. So yep. they got knocked out, and we are eighth. Uh, we've been in eighth the Western Conference for several seasons. Uh, haven't quite made it to championship, but. We've been there. Uh, so we got the Warriors at number one, the Spurs two, Rockets three, Clip- Clippers fourth, mm-hmm. uh, Utah Jazz at five, the Thunder at six, the, the Grizzlies Thunder. at seven, and yeah. the Trailblazers bringing up that uh, end of the Western Conference with uh, the eighth yeah. seed. Uh, Warriors this year are 66 and 14. Yes. So and yeah, but Blazers are forty and forty. Forty and forty, <laughs> squeak squeak it in, final at the wire. But yes. hey, listen, a lot of people this year they had written Portland off. Portland yeah. uh, came out of the gate I, not looking good at all. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, w- the highest thing people could say about this year's team was, you know, at least we'll have a lottery pick. What do you, you what know. do you, what do you think though? I mean, look at we've got the, uh, the Eastern Conference. Who's at number one? Of course. Yeah, Cavaliers fifty-one yeah. and twenty-nine. 
at, it, if it shakes out the way uh, people are predicting, it, it, will it have will a probably repeat? be yeah, it'll, it'll be Golden State against uh, Versus probably LeBron uh, and the Cavs. And the Cavs. Yep. Uh, so that would be a repeat of last year's championship. Yeah. Steph Curry versus LeBron James. Yep. And uh But that, uh, Warriors have a deeper team this year. Warriors, yeah, yeah. So the uh even yeah. even the towel boy has experience. <laughs> even the towel boy. You, oh. know, <laughs> you know. Give me in, coach. I'll I'll, I'll just get a three pointer jumper. And jumper the towel point. boy for a three. Yeah. It's good. You know. <laughs> the towel, even Talboy was drafted, right? He, he's yeah, like their, yeah. you know, second auxiliary, second round pick. But no, uh, in order: Port- Portland, Cavaliers, Celtics yeah. at two, Raptors at three, Wizards at four, Hawks at five, yeah. the Bucks at six, the no Pacers hockey. at seven, yeah. and the Bulls, Chicago Bulls, squeak in at eight. Seed yeah, each conference. Yeah, you know, it's funny about uh, just. Geography, because remember, uh, the Grizzlies uh, originally were on the uh, western side of Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Vancouver Grizzlies, and of course they moved to Memphis, but they still they have not redone the uh, uh, the the conferences. So I mean, when you think of West Coast, it, Memphis Grizzlies, Memphis mm-hmm. West Coast, what you know? Uh, and so that doesn't doesn't make much sense, and people who don't follow the NBA much it it, it it is a source of great befuddlement mm-hmm. Memphis what is there any more sporting news we don't have a soccer update today but we can have it later yeah no uh, things are quiet in football land right now as uh, oh you got to baseball uh, yeah every, everyone's I'm gearing up for the draft uh, yep uh, baseball's back at it of course you know I'm a, a huge Cubs fan and Cubs winning the World Series last year was Super fantastic, mm-hmm. but uh, another you know, Hey, baseball's a long season, and uh, but they are underway. In, uh, Portland Timbers uh, seem to be doing yeah. fairly well. Yeah, right now yeah. Uh, they're they showing are, a lot of moxie. Actually, fairly well, meaning they are uh, number one in the Western Conference. Showing back, moxie, yes. Back to where they should have been right. last year. Right. Defending champions. So, Damn. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah. So, there you go. There's your news, and we're way over time, and we got to get out of here. Got stuff to do. Ooh. Lots of things to do, right? Yeah, got sure. any final thoughts there, Jason? Uh, final thoughts on a Monday of Holy Week. Ash uh, Wednesday coming up. Ash, well, no, Ash Wednesday was like 30 days ago. We're talking. Uh, oh, I'm, that's right. I did that again. Good, didn't good I? Friday. I did yeah. that again. That's all right. I just did that again. That's all right. I thought it's. Dung. Idiot. <laughs> eh, it's all good. Uh, really, no. I mean, it's. Uh, we'll see where uh, on where we are on Wednesday. Uh, of course, the news moves at a million miles an hour, and mm-hmm. it's no longer fifteen minutes of fame. You're lucky if you get fifteen seconds of fame. Now. That's right. But, uh, it and should be uh, see. It should be exciting to see yeah. what this week brings. And we'll have some. Uh, we'll have some uh, some things happening this week. Yep. And I'm uh, <laughs> wor- working things. on some other guests. Yep. Yep. To we call in by yep. the phone. I think there's going to be yep, some. We've got uh, some people. Cool, provocative uh, uh, for the future. That's right. Uh, poor. Right before we leave, I got to tell you a little oh, story okay. though about Friday. Uh, I get I get a message after the show, and it's Doc Housel. She goes, you know, I, I didn't go. Uh, too far did i uh, i can you know <laughs> oh, she yeah, was, yeah. i can totally do a pg thing i'm like yeah. hey, you know i just you know it, it's cool doc you know because she's yeah. used to anarchy and she's used yeah, to no. yeah that you know whole uh anarchy radio <laughs> it was like yeah so yeah that's fine but that's... uh yeah she uh, uh she says anytime we want her and need her she's yeah. there and god oh, bless her back. love doc housel man oh she's great she's great yeah really really uh great to so doc take us out of here dude take us home I'm ready. It's Monday. Wait until we have more news and stuff. <laughs> so uh yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you again. All right. Take care everybody.